Let us all rise for the arrival of the Honorable Senate President and the Senators of the Republic of the Philippines. So, I'll put up to 25 people. And indeed, indeed. Um, <laughs> I have it. The 63rd session of the Senate and the first regular session of the 18th Congress is hereby called to order. Senator Francis Stoll Tolentino will lead the chamber in prayer. The highest glory and honor we offer you today, Almighty Father, for your gifts of life, love, and hope. We thank you for your goodness, your compassion, your unfailing love for humanity. We acknowledge in all humility our human frailties and implore your forgiveness and mercy. Almighty Father, we come to you in this time of greatest need as the novel coronavirus continues to stalk across the land, spreading fear and confusion bringing our lives to a standstill and ultimately claiming countless lives. We, we fly to your refuge, Lord God, and we seek your protection from this malady. Stretch forth your healing hands, O Lord. Lay upon them our sick and ailing countrymen, including Senator Sani Angara. Be with the thousands who are struggling with this dreaded disease. Uplift their spirits, renew their strength, and restore them to good health. For in Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17, you have promised, For I will restore health to you and heal you of your wounds. In a special way, we thank you for healing our colleagues here in the Senate, Senators Miguel Subiri and Coco Pimentel. We humbly ask you to comfort the families and loved ones of those whose lives have been claimed by this disease. In particular, our esteemed statesman, former Senator Harrison Alvarez. In your loving arms, welcome them and grant them your everlasting peace. Lord, we lift up to you our brave and tireless frontliners and all those who risk their lives to give hope and deliverance to those aff afflicted by this crippling pandemic. Fortify their spirits, renew their strength, and shield them from all harm as they selflessly offer themselves as instruments of your divine healing. We implore your wisdom to come upon those tasked to seek the cure of this disease. Direct their minds, O Lord, so that they may, they may offer relief to the infirm physically and spiritually by this contagion. We humbly ask you to bless the leaders of this country and to help the members of this chamber today in passing measures for the relief and recovery of our countrymen. Bless us with your wisdom. Fill us with your strength and engulf us in your grace, Lord God, so that we may be united in heart and in spirit as we heal as one. We claim your promise in the book of Isaiah 40:31. For those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on the wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Our hopes will rest upon you, Lord. And all this we ask in the name, in the holy name of Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please remain standing for the singing of the Philippine National Anthem. Sa 
Secretary, will please call the roll. Roll call of members, the Honorable Senators Angara, Binay, Cayetano, De Lima, De La Rosa, Drilon, Gachalian, Go, Gordon, Ontiveros, Laxon, Lapid, Marcos, Pacquiao, Pangilinan, Pimentel, Po, Recto, Revilla, Tolentino, Villanueva, Villar, Zubiri, Senate President Soto III. There are 15 uh, senators physically present. Uh, we will acknowledge the presence of Senator Frank Brillon and Senator Francis Pangilinan uh, shortly after we approve the resolution on the teleconferencing. In the meantime, the chair declares the presence of a quorum. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I move that we dispense with the reading of the journal of the 62nd session, March 9 and 11, 2020, consider the same as approved. I so move. Any objection? Chair, here's none. The journal is approved. Mr. President, uh, I move that we proceed with the reference of business. The Secretary will proceed with the reference of business. Reference of, reference of business, messages from the House of Representatives, letter from the House of Representatives informing the Senate that on 9 March 2020, it passed the following House bills in it in which it requests the concurrence of the Senate. House number 6489, an act converting and expanding the Leyte Industrial Development Estate into the Leyte Ecological Industrial Zone, creating for this purpose the Leyte Ecological Industrial Zone Authority and appropriating funds, therefore. Refer to the Committees on Economic Affairs, Environment, Ways and Means, and Finance. House number 6365, an act upgrading the Sergao District Hospital, the Municipality of Dapa, Province of Surigao del Norte, into a level 2 general hospital to be known as the Shargao Island Medical Center, increasing its bed capacity, upgrading its professional health care services and facilities, authorizing the increase of its medical personnel and appropriating funds therefore. Further to the committees on health and finance. House number 6404, an act establishing a technical education and skills development authority, test the training and assessment center in Quezon City, to be known as the Quezon City Test the Training and Assessment Center and appropriating funds therefore. To the committees on higher education and finance. House number 6333, an act commemorating the cityhood of San Jose del Monte, province of Bulacan, to the annual celebration of the Tanglawan Festival on the occasion of its foundation day on September 10, amending for the purpose Republic Act number 9750. To the Committee of Local Government. House number 6363, an act declaring July 2 of every year a special non-working holiday in Pasig City to be known as the Anniversary Day of Pasig City. Committee of Local Government. House number 5887, an act providing for the construction of an undersea tunnel or bridge from Cebu City to the Municipality of Cordova and a coastal road expressway to the Mactan Cebu International Airport and appropriating funds, therefore. To the Committee on Public Works and Finance. House number 6373, an act renewing for another 25 years the franchise granted to Tandag Electric and Telephone Company, Inc. on the Republic Act number 8715 entitled, an act granting the Tandag Electric and Telephone Company, Inc. a franchise to construct, establish, install, maintain and operate local exchange network in the province of Shargao, Surigao del Sur. The Committee on Public Services. House number 6374, an act renewing for another 25 years, the franchise granted to Caceres Broadcasting Corporation under Republic Act number 8106, entitled an act granting Caceres Broadcasting Corporation a franchise to construct, install, operate and maintain radio and television broadcasting stations the island of Luzon and for other purposes. The Committee on Public Services. House number 875, an act providing for the improvement, rehabilitation, and modernization of the Navotas Fishport Complex. To the Committees on Agriculture and Finance. And House number 4443, an act establishing a fish port in Barangay Macarascas in the city of Puerto Princesa and appropriating funds therefore. To the Committees on Agriculture, Public Works, and Finance. Letter from the House of Representatives informing the Senate that on 10 March 2020, it passed the following House bills in it. it it requests the concurrence of the Senate. House number 78 entitled an act providing for the definition of public utility, further amending for the purpose Commonwealth Act number 146, otherwise known as the Public Service Act, 
as amended. Refer to the Committees on Public Services and Economic Affairs. House Number 6134, an act mandating banking institutions to strengthen the financing system for agricultural, fisheries, and rural development in the Philippines. To the Committees on Agriculture and uh, Banks. House Number 5912, an act declaring July 27 of every year a special national non-working holiday amending for the purpose Republic Act Number 9645, otherwise known as the commemoration of the founding anniversary of the Iglesia Ni Cristo Act. To the Committee on uh, Constitutional Amendments. House Number 6136, an act amending Republic Act Number 8794, entitled An Act Imposing a Motor Vehicle User's Charge on Owners of All Types of Motor Vehicles and for Other Purposes, as amended by Republic Act Number 11239. To the Committee on uh, Committees on Public Services, Ways and Means, and uh, Finance. House Number 6123, an act defining the offenses of discharge of firearms and indiscriminate firing of firearms and providing stiffer penalties, therefore, amending for the purpose Article 254 of Act Number 3815 as amended, otherwise known as the Revised Penal Code, and Republic Act Number 10591, otherwise known as the Comprehensive Firearms and Ammunition Regulation Act. To the Committee on Public Order. House Number 5975, an act declaring the fourth Thursday of November of every year as National Thanksgiving Day. To the committees on uh, civil service and labor. House Number 6192, an act preserving the indigenous games of the Philippines. To the committees on sports and uh, cultural communities. House Number 6254, an act renewing for another 25 years the franchise granted to FBS Radio Network Inc. under Republic Act Number 8114 entitled An Act Granting FBS Radio Network Inc. a franchise to establish, construct, install, maintain, and operate commercial radio and television station in the Philippines and for other purposes. To the committee on public services. An act. Okay. House Number 6. House number 6256, an act renewing for another 25 years, the franchise granted to Century Communications Marketing Center, Inc., doing business under the name and style of Century Broadcasting Network under Republic Act number 8133, entitled an act granting Century Communications Marketing Center, Inc., a franchise to construct, install, operate, and maintain for commercial purposes radio and television broadcasting stations in the Philippines and for other purposes. To the Committee of Public Services. House number 6371, an act renewing for another 25 years, the franchise granted to International Communications Corporation, presently known as Bayan Telecommunications, Inc., under Public Act number 3259, entitled an act granting the International Communications Corporation a franchise to establish radio stations for domestic telecommunications, radio phone, broadcasting, and telecasting, as amended by Public Act numbers 4905 and 7633. Committee of Public Services. And House Number 6091, an act providing protection from liability to volunteers for acts or emissions committed in the performance of their duties during emergency situations. To the committees on social justice and uh, justice. Bills on first reading, Senate Number 1412, an act to further strengthen the anti-money laundering act law, amending for the purpose sections 2, 3, 7, 10, 12, and 20 of Republic Act Number 9160, otherwise known as the Anti-Money Laundering Act of 2001, as amended and for other purposes, introduced by Senator Poe. To the Committees on Banks and Justice. Senate Number 1414, an act establishing the emergency response and recovery package to counter the COVID-19 pandemic, also entitled Pag-asa Alaga Sustento at Angat sa Panahon ng COVID-19 crisis package for and for other purposes introduced by Senator Marcos. The Committee on Finance. Senate Number 1415, an act amending Section 288 of the National Internal Revenue Code of 1997 as amended and for other purposes introduced by Senator Marcos. The Committee on Ways and Means and Finance. Senate Number 1416, an act amending Republic Act Number 11332, otherwise known as the Mandatory Reporting of Notifiable Diseases and Health Events of Public Health Concern Act, and for other purposes, introduced by Senator Marcos. The Committee on Health. Senate Number 1417, an act appropriating the sum of 108 billion pesos for the 2020 fiscal stimulus package to address the economic impact of COVID-19, introduced by Senator Angara. The Committee on Finance. Senate Number 1419, an act providing for a unified system for separation, retirement, and pension of the military and uniformed personnel services of the Republic of the Philippines, creating the Military and Uniformed Personnel Retirement Fund Authority, providing funds therefore and for other purposes, introduced by Senator Go. The Committee on National Defense and uh, Peace and Finance. Senate Number 1420, an act mandating the appointment of barangay health workers in barangays and providing for their duties and responsibilities, compensation and benefits, and for other purposes, introduced by Senator Revilla, Jr. To the Committees on Health, Local Government, and Finance. Senate Number 1421, an act institutionalizing microfinance programs and access to capital to support the growth 
and grow micro, small, and medium enterprises, allocating funds, therefore, and for other purposes, introduced by Senator Revilla, Jr. For the Committees on Trade, Economic Affairs, Ways and Means, and Finance. Senate Number 1422, an act providing for the Magna Carta of Young Farmers, introduced by Senator Revilla, Jr. For the Committees on Agriculture, Youth, and Finance. Senate Number 1423, an act establishing the National Health Passport System, thereby strengthening the primary health care system and appropriating funds, therefore, introduced by Senator Revilla, Jr. For the Committees on Health and Finance. Senate Number 1424, an act establishing a national economic decentralization plan to facilitate further growth in all regions of the Philippines and for other purposes, introduced by Senator Revilla, Jr. To, to the Committees on Economic Affairs and Finance. Senate Number 1425, an act to institutionalize a standard upgrade and modernization of regional hospitals to create and establish regional center of excellence for health care, introduced by Senator Revilla, Jr. To the Committees on Health and Finance. Senate Number 1426, an act amending Republic Act Number 7610, otherwise known as the Special Protection of Children Against Abuse, Exploitation, and Discrimination Act, as amended and for other purposes, introduced by Senator Marcos. To the Committee on Women and uh, uh, Women in Family Relations. Senate Number 1427, an act amending Republic Act Number 11469, otherwise known as the Bayani Bayanihan to Heal as One Act, introduced by Senator Marcos. To the Committee on Finance. Senate Number 1428, an act amending Republic Act Number 7924, otherwise known as an act creating the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority, defining its powers and function, providing funds therefore and for other purposes, introduced by Senator Marcos. To the Committee of Law and Government. Senate Number 1429, an act granting full tax benefits to donations provided during a state of calamity and for other purposes, introduced by Senator Marcos. To the Committee on Ways and Means. Senate Number 1430, an act prohibiting discrimination against health care workers, frontliners, and persons suspected of COVID-19 infection, providing penalties, therefore, for other purposes, introduced by Senator Marcos. To the Committee on Justice. Senate Number 1431, an act establishing an economic recovery package to businesses in the hardest-hit sectors by the coronavirus disease 2019, appropriating funds, therefore, and for other purposes, introduced by Senator Marcos. To the Committees on Economic Affairs and Finance. Senate Number 1432, an act amending Sections 28, 38, and 39 of Republic Act Number 7305, otherwise known as the Magna Carta of Public Health Workers, introduced by Senator De Lima. To the Committees on Health and Finance. Senate Number 1433, an act requiring all public telecommunications entities granted with congressional franchises to provide their subscribers with free access to government websites, introduced by Senator De Lima. The Committee on Public Services. Senate Number 1434, an act promoting the welfare and protection of the elderly and appropriating funds, therefore, introduced by Senator De Lima. The Committee is on Social Justice and Finance. Senate Number 1435, an act providing discount for indigent job applicants in the payment of fees and charges for certain certificates and clearances issued by government agencies for employment application, introduced by Senator Poe. To the Committee is on Labor and Social Justice. Senate Number 1436, an act amending Republic Act Number 11332, otherwise known as the Mandatory Reporting of Notifiable Diseases and Health Events of Public Health Concern Act, introduced by Senator Ontiveros. To the Committees on Health and Justice. Senate Number 1437, an act modernizing the regulation of health facilities and services and appropriating funds, therefore, repealing for the purpose Republic Act Number 4226, otherwise known as the Hospital Licensure Act, introduced by Senator Revilla, Jr. To the Committees on Health and Finance. Senate Number 1438, an act amending Section 3 of Republic Act Number 7977, otherwise known as an act to lengthen the school calendar from 200 days to not more than 220 class days, introduced by Senator Soto. To the Committee on Basic Education. Senate Number 1439, an act amending Sections 13 of Republic Act Number 10121, otherwise known as the Philippine Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Act of 2010, introduced by Senator De Lima. To the Committees on National Defense, uh, Peace and Finance. Senate Number 1440, an act creating the Philippine Center for Disease Control and Prevention, defining its powers and functions, and for other purposes, introduced by Senator Gordon. To the Committees on Health and Finance. Senate Number 1441, an act mandating life insurance and additional health insurance coverage for all workers in the public and private sector compelled to render service outside the home during a public health emergency introduced by Senator Ontiveros. To the Committees on Labor, Civil Service, and Finance. Senate Number 1442, an act providing for the establishment and operation of additional quarantine stations, grounds, and anchorages in all strategic areas throughout the country and appropriating funds, therefore, introduced by Senator Cayetano. To the Committees on Health and Finance. Senate Number 1443, an act providing for national health security and appropriating funds, therefore, introduced by Senator Cayetano. To the Committees on Health and Finance. Senate Number 1444, an act strengthening national preparedness and virus reduction in response to public health emergencies, introduced by Senator Pacquiao. To the Committees on Health and Finance. 
Senate Number 1445, an act establishing a national COVID center, 19 center, to be known as the COVID-19 Disease Prevention and Control Center, introduced by Senator Pacquiao. For the Committee is on Health and Finance. Senate Number 1446, an act amending Republic Act Number 10173, otherwise known as the Data Privacy Act of 2012, and for other purposes, introduced by Senator Marcos. The Committee of Science and Technology. Senate Number 1447, an act extending the prescriptive period of offenses under the Violence Against Women and Their Children Act, the crime of rape, and the crimes characterized as crimes against chastity under Title 11 of the Revised Penal Code, amending for the purpose Section 24 of Republic Act Number 9262, otherwise known as the Anti-Violence Against Women and Their Children Act of 2004, and Article 90 of the Revised Penal Code, as amended, introduced by Senator Marcos. To the Committee is on Women and Justice. Senate Number 1448, an act strengthening Republic Act Number 11165, otherwise known as the Telecommuting Act, and for other purposes, introduced by Senator Marcos. To the Committee on Labor and Employment. Senate Number 1449, an act appropriating the sum of 370 billion pesos for the 2020 fiscal stimulus package to address the economic impact of COVID-19, introduced by Senator Angara. To the Committee on Finance. Senate Number 1450, an act strengthening national preparedness and response to public health emergencies by creating a center for disease control, introduced by Senator Poe. To the committees on health and finance. Senate Number 1451, an act instituting the Medical Reserve Corps, appropriating funds, therefore, and for other purposes, introduced by Senator Go. To the committees on health and finance. Senate Number 1452, an act authorizing the Secretary of Education to postpone the start of school year in case of declaration of a state of emergency, state of <coughs> calamity, or similar occurrence, and within for the purpose Republic Act Number 7977, otherwise known as an act to lengthen the school calendar from 200 days to not more than 220 class days, introduced by Senator Villanueva. The Committee on Basic Education. Senate Number 1453, an act granting hazard pay to workers in critical industries during a state of calamity or emergency or public health emergency, introduced by Senator Villanueva. To the Committee on uh, Labor. Senate Number 1454, an act amending Republic Act Number 7581 as amended, otherwise known as the Price Act, and for other purposes, introduced by Senator Villanueva. To the Committee on Trade. Senate Number 1455, an act granting hazard pay to covered employees of the government and appropriating funds, therefore, introduced by Senator Villanueva. To the Committee is on Civil Service and Finance. Senate Number 1456, an act providing for a wage employment assistance program for displaced and or vulnerable workers, institutionalizing for the purpose the Tulong Pangkabuhayan sa ating disadvantaged displaced workers to PAD program of the Department of Labor and Employment, appropriating funds therefore and for other purposes, introduced by Senator Villanueva. To the Committee is on Labor and Finance. Resolutions, PS Resolution Number 351, entitled Resolution Honoring and Commending the Sacrifice, Bravery, and Heroism of the Men and Women in the Healthcare Profession and Other Frontliners in the COVID-19 Crisis, introduced by Senator Soto III. To the Committee on Rules. PS Resolution Number 352, Resolution Directing the Appropriate Senate Committee to Conduct an Inquiry in Aid of Legislation on the Status of the Implementation of Republic Act Number 11055, otherwise known as the Philippine Identification System Act, with the end in view of ensuring its prompt and full-scale execution to achieve its intended purpose, introduced by Senator Soto III and Lacson. To the Committee on Justice. PS Resolution Number 353, Resolution Expressing the Profound Sympathy and Sincerest Condolences of the Senate to the family of Joe Mar Ang, Chief Financial Officer of RSA Motors and son of San Miguel Corporation President and CEO Ramon Ang, introduced by Senator Revilla Jr. To the Committee on Rules. PS Resolution Number 354, Resolution Commending Dr. Raul Destura and his colleagues for their invaluable contribution to public health through their invention of reliable Fast and Affordable Coronavirus Disease COVID-19 Test Kits introduced by Senator Villa Jr. To the Committee on Rules. PS Resolution Number 355, Resolution Calling the Appropriate Senate Committee to look into the implementation of Republic Act Number 11055 in the performance of the oversight function of Congress introduced by Senator Villa Jr. To the Committee on Justice. PS Resolution Number 356, Resolution Calling the appropriate Senate committee to conduct a full assessment in aid of legislation on the appropriateness of seeking a debt moratorium introduced by Senator Revilla Jr. To the Committee on Economic Affairs. PS Resolution Number 357, Resolution Directing the Appropriate Senate Committee to conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation regarding the possible advantages of a debt moratorium for the Philippines from international debts to supplement financing and support emergency and recovery programs related to COVID-19 pandemic introduced by Senator Marcos. To the Committee on Economic Affairs. PS Resolution Number 358, Resolution Calling the Senate to Convene the Congressional Commission on Health, pursuant to Republic Act Number 7305, otherwise known as the Magna Carta of Public Health Workers, introduced by Senator De Lima. To the Committee on Health. PS Resolution Number 359, a resolution directing the Senate 
Committee on Energy to conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation on the sufficiency of the Department of Energy's existing policy on the minimum inventory requirement for oil and petroleum products and the necessity of establishing a strategic petroleum reserve to ensure the security of the country's oil supply introduced by Senator Gatsalian. To the Committee on Energy. PS Resolution Number 360 entitled Resolution Directing the Senate Committee on Energy to Conduct an Inquiry in the Implementation of Republic Act No. 8479, otherwise known as the Downstream Oil Industry Deregulation Act of 1998, with the end in view of introducing remedial legislation as may be necessary, introduced by Senator Gatsalian. To the Committee on Energy. P.S. Resolution Number 361, Resolution Directing the Senate Committee on Energy to Conduct an Inquiry in Aid of Legislation on the Effect of the Enhanced Community Quarantine in Response to the Coronavirus Disease 2019 on the Electric Power Industry, introduced by Senator Gatsalian. To the Committee on Energy. P.S. Resolution Number 362, Resolution Calling for the Immediate Resignation of Secretary Francisco T. Duque III for his failure of leadership, negligence, lack of foresight, and inefficiency in the performance of his mandate as Secretary of the Department of Health, resulting in poor planning, delayed response, lack of transparency, and misguided and flip-flopping policies and measures in addressing the COVID-19 pandemic that endangered and continue to endanger the lives of our healthcare professionals, other frontliners, and the Filipino people, introduced by Senator Soto III, Recto, Zubiri, Angara, Binay, Po, Pacquiao, Gatchalian, Tolentino, Villanueva, De La Rosa, Marcos, Lapid, Revilla, and Laxon. The Committee Rules. P.S. Resolution Number 363, Resolution Expressing the Profound Sympathy and Sincere Condolences of the Senate on the Death of Honorable Harrison T. Alvarez, former Senator, 1987-1998, former Member of the House of Representatives, 1998-2001, and former Member of the Cabinet, introduced by Senator Soto III and Tolentino. To the Committee Rules. P.S. Resolution Number 364, Resolution Commending All the Frontliners and Essential Workers Who Risk Their Own Health and Safety in Order to Serve Their Fellow Filipinos in the Midst of the COVID-19 Pandemic, Introduced by Senator De La Rosa. The Committee Rules. P.S. Resolution Number 365, Resolution Directing the Appropriate Senate Committee to Conduct an Inquiry in Age of Legislation into the Veracity of the Reported Malpractices in the Procurement of Goods and Supplies, as alleged in the Third Weekly Report of the President to the Joint Congressional Oversight Committee, Pursuant to Section 5 of Republic Act Number 1146 otherwise known as the Bayanihan to Heal as One Act, introduced by Senator De Lima. To the Committee is on Accountability of Public Officers, Investigations, and Finance. P.S. Resolution Number 366, Resolution Honoring the Late Former Senator Hirson Sonny Alvarez and celebrate his profound legacy as a statesman and a champion of our democracy, environment, and the rule of law, introduced by Senator De Lima. To the Committee Rules. P.S. Resolution Number 367, Resolution Urging the Appropriate Senate Committee to Conduct an Inquiry in Aid of Legislation on the Confusion and Frustration of the Local Administrative Level with regard to the implementation of the Emergency Subsidy Program of the National Government in combating the COVID-19 outbreak with the end in view of identifying gaps in program design and implementation and improving delivery systems to its target beneficiaries introduced by Senator De Lima. The Committee is on Social Justice and Finance. P.S. Resolution Number 368, Resolution Expressing the Sense of the Senate to Disallow the Resumption of POGO Operations in the country, taking into consideration the financial, social, and human costs of POGO operations and to direct the 50 billion pesos unpaid taxes of POGOs to fund the government's response to COVID-19, introduced by Senator Ontiveros. The Committee Rules. P.S. Resolution Number 369, Resolution Urging the Executive Branch to exert legal and diplomatic pressure upon the Chinese government to cease all ecologically destructive activities in the West Philippine Sea and to pay reparations for damage already done, introduced by Senator Ontiveros. The Committee on Foreign Relations. P.S. Resolution Number 370, Resolution Urging the Department of Social Welfare and Development to include all families with senior citizens in the Social Amelioration Program introduced by Senator Ontiveros. To the Committee on Social Justice and Finance. P.S. Resolution Number 371, Resolution Expressing the Profound Sympathy and Sincere Condolences of the Senate on the Death of the Honorable Hirson Sonny Turingan Alvarez, former Senator, Environmental Advocate, and Human Rights Activist, introduced by Senator Zubiri, Gordon, Angara, Gachalian, Binay, and Villanueva. To the Committee Rules. P.S. Resolution Number 372, Resolution Amending Section 11, Rule 11, Section 22, and Rule 14, Section 41 of the Rules of the Senate to allow the conduct of plenary sessions and committee hearings through teleconference, video conference, and other reliable forms of remote or electronic means, introduced by Senator Zubiri, Recto, Drilon, Angara, Binay, Cayetano, De La Rosa, Gachalian, Lapid, Marcos, Pacquiao, Poe, Revilla Jr., Villanueva, Villar, and Lacson. To the Committee Rules. 
PS Resolution Number 373, Resolution Honoring and Commending the Filipino Healthcare Workers Who Bravely Serve as Frontliners Against the COVID-19 Virus Epidemic in the Philippines and respectfully urging that they each be awarded the appropriate distinctions in accordance with Executive Order Number 236, Series of 2003, otherwise known as the Honors Code of the Philippines, introduced by Senator Angara. The committee rules. PS Resolution Number 374, Resolution <coughs> Expressing the Sense of the Senate to Discourage Handshaking <coughs> as it poses danger in health and can escalate the spread of virus and germs introduced by Senator Angara. To the committee and rules. PS Resolution Number 375, Resolution Urging the Commission on Higher Education to authorize and encourage all public and private higher education institutions to end the current semester or equivalent academic period by April 30, 2020 and to adopt a pass or drop grading system introduced by Senator Villanueva. To the Committee on Higher Education. PS Resolution Number 376, Resolution Directing the Senate Committee on Higher Technical and Vocational Education, Committee on Science and Technology, and other appropriate committees of the Senate to inquire and review in aid of legislation the preparedness of higher education institutions, students, and faculty to shift to online modes of learning in light of the continuing threat of the coronavirus disease COVID-19 and the status of the internet connectivity in the country introduced by Senator Villanueva. To the Committees on Higher Education and Science and Technology. PS Resolution Number 377, Resolution urging the appropriate committees of the Senate to study and recommend a sectoral approach policy in gradually lifting the lockdown in order to dampen the impact of the coronavirus disease to the economy without increasing the spread of infection introduced by Senator Villanueva. To the Committees on Economic Affairs and Health. Committee reports. Committee report number 71, submitted by the Committees on Public Works and Finance on House number 5888, introduced by Representative Tejada et al., entitled, An Act Establishing the Third District Engineering Office in the Municipality of Milang, Province of Catabato, and Appropriating Funds, therefore, recommending its approval without amendment, sponsor Senator Pacquiao. To the calendar for ordinary business. Committee report number 72, com submitted by the Committees on Public Works and Finance on House number 5811, introduced by Representatives Ramos and Madrona, entitled An Act Transferring the Location of the Sorsogon Second District Engineering Office from Bulan Sorsogon to mm. Gubat Sorsogon, amending for the purpose Republic Act number 9689, entitled An Act Establishing the Sorsogon Second District Engineering Office in the Province of Sorsogon and Appropriating Funds, therefore, recommending its approval without amendment, sponsor Senator Pacquiao. To the calendar for, calendar for Ordinary business. Committee report number 73, submitted by the Committees on Public Works and Finance on House number 5854, introduced by Representative Taliada et al., entitled, An Act Establishing the First District Engineering Office in the Municipality of Labo, Province of Camarines Norte, and Appropriating Funds, therefore, recommending its approval without amendment, sponsor Senator Pacquiao. The calendar for ordinary business. Committee report number 74, submitted by the Committees on Public Works and Finance on House number 5852, Introduced by Representative Villafuerte et al. entitled, Anak Converting the Albay Diversion Road in the Municipalities of Minalabak, Bula, and Nabua, in all, all in the province of Camarines Sur, into a national road and appropriating funds, therefore, recommending its approval without amendment, sponsor Senator Pacquiao. Uh, to the calendar for ordinary business. Committee Report Number 75, <coughs> submitted by the Committee on Public Works on House Number 624, introduced by Representatives Marquez and Madrona, entitled Anak Renaming the Kalibu Banga Balete Batan Altabas National Road, which is part of the Kalibu Highway stretching from the Numancia Kalibu Boundary at Barangay Laginbanwa in the Municipality of Numancia, traversing Barangay's Poblacion and Dagao, Estancia, Tigayon, and Libuna Norte in the Municipality of Kalibu, Barangay's Linabuan, Sur, Humarap, Mambog, Poblacion, Tabayon, Libas, and Venturanza in the Municipality of Banga, Barangay's Pulhensio, Feliciano, Calizo, Morales, Poblacion, Cortes, and Aranas in the Municipality of Balete, Barangay's Lalab, and Kabugao in the Municipality of Batan, Barangay's Kabugao, Linayasan, Odiong, Poblacion, Manup, Kabangila, up to the Capiz Aklan boundary in the Municipality of Altabas, all in the province of Aklan, as Congressman Alan Salas Kimpo National Highway, recommending its approval without amendment, sponsor Senator Pacquiao. To the calendar for ordinary business. Committee report number 76, submitted by the Committees on Public Works and Finance on House number 5850, introduced by Representatives Juan Singh et al., entitled Ana Converting the Gimba Talugtog Umingan Provincial Road, the municipalities of Gimba and Talugtog, all in the province of Nueva Ecija, the municipality of Umingan, province of Pangasinan, international road and providing funds, therefore, recommending its approval without amendment, sponsor Senator Pacquiao. To the calendar for ordinary business. Committee report number 77, submitted by the Committees on Public Works and Finance on House number 5849, introduced by Representatives Representative Dimapore et al. entitled, An Act Providing for the Construction of a National <coughs> Road from the Junction of Lanao del Norte Interior to <coughs> Circumferential Road at Barangay Poblacion through Barangay Limon Cret, Municipality of Magsaysay, to Barangay San Manuel, Municipality of Lala, to Barangay Pansilan and Katipunan, Municipality of Sapan, to Barangay Mahayhay, 
Mahayahay, Belis, Malina, Sitio, Daog, Butadon, Bansardil, Antipolo, Misipati, Kapatagan, Tubarangay, Kalube, Misipati, Sultan, Naga, Dimaporo, Tubarangay, Lantungan, Misipati, Aurora, all located in the province of Lanao del Norte, into a national road to be known as Iligan Aurora National Highway Bypass Road, appropriating funds, therefore, recommending its approval without amendment, Sponsor Senator Pacquiao. Committee Report Number 78, submitted by the Committees on Public Works and Finance on House Number 1061, introduced by Representative Yap et al. entitled, Ana Converting the Santa Ignacia Gimba Provincial Road in the Provinces of Tarlac and Nueva Ecija via Herona Pura Road, stretching from Barangay Nambalan, Municipality of Santa Ignacia, to Barangay Buenavista, Municipality of Pura, or in the Province of Tarlac, into a national road and appropriating funds, therefore, recommending its approval without amendment, Sponsor Senator Pacquiao. To the Gala, their ordinary business. Committee Report Number 79, submitted by the Committees on Public Works and Finance on House Number 5851, introduced by Representative Villa Fuerte et al., entitled, Anak Converting the Road Network Connecting Barangay Grijalbo in the Municipality of San Fernando and the Municipality of Bula, Province of Camarones Sur, into a national road, recommending its approval without amendment, Sponsor Senator Pacquiao. To the Gala, their ordinary business. Committee Report Number 80, submitted by the Committees on Public Works and Finance on House Number 5831, introduced by Representative Swan Singh et al., entitled, Anak Converting the Gimba Pura Provincial Road stretching from Barangay San Rafael to Barangay San Miguel, both in the Municipality of Gimba, Province of Nueva Ecija, and to Barangay Buenavista in the Municipality of Pura, Province of Tarlac, into a national road and appropriating funds, therefore, recommending its approval without amendment, sponsor Senator Pacquiao. To the calendar for ordinary business. Committee Report Number 81, submitted by the Committees on Public Works and Finance on House Number 1778, introduced by Representative Erigel et al., entitled, Converting the Road Stretching from Barangay Anduyan, Municipality of Tubao, Province of La Union, to Barangay San Pascual, Municipality of Tuba, Province of Benguet, to a national road and appropriating funds, therefore, recommending its approval without amendment, sponsor Senator Pacquiao. The calendar for ordinary business. Committee Report Number 82, submitted by the Committees on Public Works and Finance on House Number 5853, introduced by Representative Calderon et al., and an act creating a district engineering office in the 7th Legislative District of the Province of Cebu and appropriating funds, therefore, recommending its approval without amendment, taking into consideration Senate Number 1333, Sponsor Senator Pacquiao. The calendar for ordinary business. Committee Report Number 83, submitted by the Committees on Public Works and Finance on Senate Number 1312, introduced by Senator Binay, entitled, An Act Providing for the Conversion of Dinapige Sabela Road Going to Dilasag, Aurora, into a National Road and appropriating funds, therefore, recommending its approval without amendment, Sponsor Senator to the calendar for ordinary business. Before I acknowledge the uh, majority leader, I uh, would like to manifest uh, being the principal sponsor or principal author of Resolution 351. We are uh, um, including Senator Ping Lakson as co author of Resolution 351. For the record, majority leader. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. President. Mr. President, um, we're going to tackle a very important resolution. Uh, with the permission of the body, I move that we consider proposed resolution number 372. Uh, and uh, we'd like to ask the secretary to read the title of the resolution. Any Mr. objection? Responsible. Hearing none, consideration is in order. The secretary will read the title of the resolution. Resolution amending Rule 11, Section 22, and Rule 14, Section 41 of the Rules of the Senate to allow the conduct of plenary sessions and committee hearings through teleconference, video conference, and other reliable forms of remote or electronic means. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, um, may I be allowed to sponsor the message? Yes, the Majority Chairman. Leader is recognized to Thank sponsor you, Mr. the Mr. Chairman measure. of the Committee on Rules, uh, we filed PS Resolution Number 372, this resolution amends Section 11, or rather Rule 11, Section 22, and Rule 14, Section 41 of the Rules of the Senate to allow the conduct of plenary sessions and committee hearings to teleconferencing, video conference, and other reliable forms or, of remote or electronic means. Mr. President, much of this is really self-explanatory. We all know we are now... Um, uh, going through a pandemic all over the world. And just to be specific, on March 8, the President uh, issued Proclamation 922 declaring a state of public health emergency in the Philippines. And this, uh, because of due, due to this outbreak of the coronavirus or COVID-19. <coughs> and on uh, March 16, uh, declared Proclamation number 929, declaring the state of calamity throughout the Philippines for a period of six months, which placed us all, Mr. President, under the um, enhanced community quarantine. And for areas uh, 
not in Luzon and NCR under uh, GCQ or general quarantine. Um, Mr. President, I do not have to anymore uh, remind our colleagues the danger of COVID-19. I personally had uh, contracted this disease. Uh, I feel that I had gotten it on March uh, uh, 11, uh, the last day when we had so many visitors, mayors, councillors, and uh, probably, possibly, there was an asymptomatic patient here, and uh, I had contracted the, the disease there, or the virus there. So talagang traidor po siya, Mr. President. Sobrang-sobrang traidor eh, pati ako na yun eh, tignan mo na yung tsura ko, humaba na yung white hair ko at yung aking balbas. Ganun, na iba na yung look ko dahil dito sa COVID-19 na ito. Uh, Mr. President, <coughs> thankfully, my case was more uh, of a mild one. And we have two other colleagues that had gotten uh, the virus, uh, Senator Coco Pimentel as well as Senator um, Sani Angara, who unfortunately uh, was tested positive once again, but I believe it's a false positive and he's no longer, uh, he can no longer contaminate anyone. But nevertheless, we have several staff. The staff of Senator Pia Caetano had contracted it. Uh, we have the staff of Senator Bong Revilla, who passed away, uh, unfortunately, because of this disease. And, uh, and uh, more recently, we have several, over a dozen of our staff uh, had tested positive in the, today's hearings um, with the rapid test kits provided by our uh, uh, dear Senate, Senator, Senator Laxon and Senator, uh, the Senate President. So, Mr. President, I do not have to stress uh, the importance of being able to work from home for the senators, many of whom, uh, by the way, Mr. President, with all due respect to our older statesmen in the Senate, um, are, uh, have some, some of us or some of them have uh, existing preconditions, health preconditions, and um, are, of course, uh, much advanced in <coughs> age and, uh, you know, uh, under the protocols, uh, not just set forth by our country, by our government, but by the World Health Organization, is that those who are on the elderly or those senior citizens must really remain at home because they are the most vulnerable. Um, and uh, with that, Mr. President, we see a number of cases as well, you know, increasing. Uh, we started last week, last Monday, it was 7,000 cases. Today, I'm sure we're about 9,500 already. We thought we slowed down the curve by uh, contamination having only about 100 uh, new cases a day to 130 cases. Bumalik po muli sa over 200, 250 cases a day. And um, if I'm not mistaken, probably by Tuesday or Wednesday, the latest, we would have already breached a landmark number of 10,000 cases. So. This virus is still out there lurking in every nook and cranny, every corner of uh, Metro Manila NCR. And as we saw the results in today's rapid test kits, uh, Mr. President, it's quite an alarming number. Even my staff was tested positive. I had him uh, retested again through the PCR. So Mr. President, delicado talaga. And we would like to protect uh, not only the members of the Senate, but also the members of our staff because we have about 3,000 uh, staff, both secretariat and staff of the senators, and many of them do not have uh, means to transport themselves here because they go through public transport. About 80% of them, Mr. President, take public transport. So if we can work from home and they can work from home, it will also decongest the Senate from any possible contamination and, um, and spread of the virus, which will also help lessen the problem with our national health service or our uh, doctors and nurses and hospitals. So what we are going to do, Mr. President, is very simple. We are going to amend Rule 11, Section 22, uh, allowing or the committee to conduct meetings or hearings to teleconferencing, video conferencing, and other reliable forms of remote electronic means. In cases where there is force majeure or occurrence of an emergency which prevent the senators from physically attending committee hearings or committee meetings or hearings. Then we will also amend section 14 or rule 14, section 41 rather, that the, uh, with consultation of the majority leader, minority leader may postpone the holding of the session 
on a day-to-day -day adjournment or letter B, with the consent of the House of Representatives, convene and hold session through teleconference, video conferencing of other or other reliable forms of remote and electronic means. It's a very, it is a very uh, simple uh, restroom, Mr. Forward. President, although we'll make an, um, further amendments as are recommended mm. by the Senate President and Senator Laxon to make this a hybrid system wherein we're, we can allow members on the floor and members at their homes, the safety of their homes. So uh, that's it, Mr. President, and I'll be open to a few questions if there are any clarifying questions. Right, uh, the, just to inject a little levity, uh, yes, Mr. President. when you mentioned the uh, members of the Senate with advanced age, uh, you're not pertaining to the minority leader, no? Or uh, the <laughs> Senate President? Uh, no, or sir. Or Senator Gordon? Or no, Senator Lacson? I was very careful in omitting any names. But uh, I suggest that instead of using advance in age, you say advance in knowledge. In knowledge. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> no, although I'd like to put on record that many of our elder statesmen here in the Senate, our statesmen and women, are actually one of the hardest working members of the Senate, one of the hardest working. But I just want to keep them alive. I want to keep all of you alive. <laughs> Unfortunately, we just lost a former senator, which we will honor uh, at the end of our session, <clears throat> yes. Senator Harrison <throat> Alvarez. So I just want to make sure that all 24 senators will be alive after this pandemic. That is my uh, uh, commitment as your majority floor leader. All right. Are there any, any interpolations? Otherwise, we will be going into the period of amendments. I believe Senator uh, Lacson just, just uh, like to uh, ask. Senator Lacson is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Before this representation uh, avails of the uh, period of interpolation, if the distinguished sponsor and majority leader will uh, yield you know, yes. I will some be honored. part of the questions, I would just like to make a very quick manifestation that I be made a co-author of sir. Senate Resolution 372. Yes, sir. Yeah, that said, Mr. President, uh, uh, is my understanding correct that this proposed resolution merely lays down the exception rather than the rule in the use of teleconferencing on how the Senate should conduct meetings, hearings, plenary sessions? That is correct, uh, uh, Mr. President, to the this distinguished for the record, Mr. President. Yes, just, just uh, for the record as well. This will only be utilized during times such as these, which are health uh, emergencies, uh, national health emergencies, uh, forced during times of force majeure, which is the natural calamities, maybe earthquake, if the earthquake deems that our building is unusable uh, and uh, no longer can be used for sessions, then we can do this uh, through video conferencing. Uh, force majeure also could mean uh, uh, man-made calamities like war. If there's uh, uh, peace and order problems and we cannot attend sessions, uh, only an exception rather than the rule. And the, uh, we can further amend this uh, if your honor is willing to sponsor the amendment that we can give that authority to the Senate president when he deems fit that, this, uh, that we go back to regular programming, which is uh, that we all come back to the session floor uh, physically. Mr. You mentioned, and the uh, resolution itself makes mention of two exceptions, no? or two situations, force majeure and uh, occurrence of an emergency. No? Yes, now, may this representation be educated on what constitutes an emergency to justify a member from using teleconferencing, video conferencing, for not being able to physically attend a Senate meeting or to be physically present? from attending the plenary session in the session hall, Mr. President. What kind of emergencies are valid? Well, we were thinking more of national emergencies. Maybe we lack the wording here that's a national emergency. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, this is a national health emergency, uh, as well as uh, probably man-made man calamities, as I mentioned earlier, war, or if there's a uh, breakdown of lawlessness that prevents our colleagues from coming towards uh, uh, the Batasan of the uh, Senate area. Um, in this case, it's unique because it's a, it's a virus. It's never happened uh, the last 100 years. So maybe with the uh, further explanation or amendments of our colleagues, subject to style, we can actually uh, 
uh, make it more specific, Mr. President? Yes, Mr. President. Actually, I'm uh, going uh, into that, uh, especially at the uh, period of amendments, Mr. President, <coughs> that uh, we should only limit, because we are uh, undergoing the COVID-19 pandemic. This is a crisis of uh, worldwide you know, implications. And uh, at the proper time during the period of amendments, I would like to propose an amendment in that regard, that we should only limit the exception to, uh, to the rule uh, to the uh, COVID-19 issue. Anyway, we can, uh, from time to time, if the situation so demands, we can adopt another resolution. Yeah. Uh, if there's war, or if there's uh, an occurring uh, emergency or, or uh, force majeure, as you mentioned earlier. But I would just like to propose that we limit this particular resolution to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, if that would be at the proper time, Mr. President. I would, I would appeal to my colleague that um, it's very difficult to amend rules because when we amend the rules, we have to publish this. Maybe we can give the leeway uh, by, limit, uh, by leaving the word force majeure there, which is natural and uh, man-made calamities, so that we don't have to go back later on to amend if there was a particular point in time where, for example, an earthquake and we cannot convene, uh, or there is war and we cannot convene as well, uh, that uh, we can actually uh, convene through teleconferencing. Maybe we can take out the words, for example, emergency, because then I agree with my good colleague I agree with my good colleague because what if it's an emergency for the senator, but not an emergency for for the chamber? In other words, he may invoke this. Eh, from physically attending, hindi ako makatend dahil nasa Mindanao ako, pero nagkagulo dito, hindi ako makatake off ng aeroplano, that would constitute for him, for that senator, an emergency that he cannot attend. Um, I agree with you, sir. We want, we want to uh, make sure that does not happen. We do not give special treatment to our colleagues. This is only when national emergencies uh, such as this happen. But my appeal yeah. lang to my colleagues, sir, is yeah. maganda na nandito na po siya para sa ganun, hindi na po tayo babalik pa sa pagkakataon na hindi na tayo makabalik. Because kung hindi na tayo makabalik for some uh, uh, acts of God, then uh, we will not be able to amend our rules at that time. But who will determine that there's an emergency uh, that would necessitate or compel the Senate from resorting to teleconferencing. If the, the Senate President? If the body would uh, wish it, let well, us give if, it to the, our Senate if President. Senator Soto is the permanent Senate President, uh, <laughs> I will not uh, object to the uh, counter proposal. <laughs> but you know, we are a deliberative body, we're a collegial body. And if we would like to determine if there's an emergency that would uh, compel the Senators to resort to teleconferencing, it should be decided by the whole body, not just yes. uh, that by just one person, even okay. if he's the Senate President. Okay. The, the way the rules are, are written now, um, there is this um, particular uh, line that says that uh, the Senate President in consultation. consultation with the majority leader and the minority leader Etc. Etc. So and so. Yeah, it's in uh, if that will suffice, uh, otherwise we can perhaps. Uh, it's actually already indicated in our rules. Uh, well, Mr. so President. we leave it to three persons, Mr. President. That would uh, it doesn't make any difference if we leave it to the Senate President uh, alone, or to three persons, the majority and the minority leader. We're talking. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm uh, I'm arguing this, not because Senator Soto is the Senate President or you are the majority leader and Senator Drillon is the minority leader. Because once we adopt this rule, as you said, this will encompass uh, future uh, occurrences of emergencies. And if we leave uh, the decision, what is an emergency, what is force majeure, force majeure to just three persons, maybe we can, uh, that may be an issue, Mr. President. Yes, uh, Mr. President. Uh I'm, I'm willing, Mr. President. So uh, the proposal please. of the gentleman would be at the proper time, uh, the I proper think, time. is that uh, another resolution, in oh, no. if, if there is another national Gusto emergency. Punya, so section my, my 41. proposal, Mr. President, uh, excuse me, is uh, just to limit this resolution mm, mm. to the pandemic uh, crisis, to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic crisis. It's only applicable uh, to this present crisis, 
and in, if in the future, anyway, uh, not, it's not every, day, every year that uh, a, a, a crisis of such magnitude will occur, Mr. President. The chair, chairperson of the Committee on Public Services is um, recognized. Just to weigh Senator in on the Paul. issue, I, I know exactly what Senator Laxon is being careful of. Uh, we don't have the same composition in the Senate forever. On the other hand, when you say that, I, I agree with him that it should be a concurrence among the majority of the senators. But if, that, if that's the case, let's say we need to be able to decide whether an occurrence is actually an emergency. Does it mean that we have to physically show up first before we do that again? Or can we have a provision that says that in the event that there's a deliberation whether or not uh, an occurrence is to be declared an emergency, there can be a preliminary teleconference <laughs> hearing to get the majority vote of the Senate. And then, that, and then if the, the Senate as a whole or the majority decides that it is indeed an emergency, then that teleconference is already valid. But if not, then it's not. Then we have to show up again. Because it, 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 I, I see also the point of the majority. It defeats the purpose, let's say, there is a, a natural calamity. And you really can't physically show up. So teleconferences will not be valid because we have to come back here to physically take a vote well, on it. We, so maybe we will allow at least the initial vote whether or not to allow teleconferencing as defined by what an emergency is before, you know, so that if we agree on the teleconferencing uh, uh, rule, then we don't have to show up physically if there's an emergency. But if we don't, if we don't agree, then we just proceed as that's the, the teleconference is not valid. Well, Mr. President, that should be a welcome amendment to my amendment. The uh, proposal of our Senator uh, Grace Paul, Mr. President. Yes, so it's um, uh, instead of elaborating on uh, all the wordings that uh, were mentioned, we can simply say a ma manifestation of the majority. Yes. Of my the members of the Senate may so and so. When you say manifestation, uh, that is a very wide uh, elbow room. Uh, no, that, uh, that is uh, a big elbow room wherein you can just come up with a resolution signed by all, by members. Uh, something to that effect. Uh, Mr. And you would want to declare uh, such. Yeah. What do you think? Mr. President, yes. Actually, to be able to satisfy our dear <coughs> colleague from Cavite, what we could do is further amend Section 41 para to include all uh, the majority, mem majority of our colleagues. Hindi lamang ako, Minority Floor Leader and Senate President. I, I, so, I think, uh, with the uh, yes. permission of the Majority Leader, I think the point being raised by Senator Po is that the determination of an emergency that would necessitate Correct. teleconferencing should be determined by the, by the whole body. Correct. Not just the three persons. Correct. Mm. Even through co teleconferencing. Correct. But we, if that but is my, my appeal, correct interpretation. But my, my appeal lang to Senator Laxon, and I think this is what the, the, the good lady also wants, is not to remove the, not to remove the option here. Because um, if we remove, if we just put during this pandemic, then by October, if there's a vaccine, we no longer, that is no longer valid. Uh, this teleconferencing provision will no longer be valid once we are all over this pandemic. But what I'd like to happen for future generations, future Senate, Senate uh, sessions, is that if there is an emergency similar to this, hindi po natin alam, baka new normal na ito. After we take the vaccine, baka nag-mutate yung uh, uh, virus or we have a, a, a case like, uh, I mean, God forbid, no, if there's an earthquake, the big one, this is uh, under um, what we call reclaim area, this can be liquefied. Uh, to liquefaction, so pwedeng bumagsak po itong, or it can render it uh, uh, unstable, or a tsunami. You know, if a tsunami will hit and hits us, and we can no longer attend, we may not be able to physically amend our rules once again. But if we leave it here for future uh, emergencies, mas maganda yun na nandito na. Yun nga lang, mas stricto lang, hindi lang yung presidente magde-decide, or ako, or the minority floor leader. The decision will be made by uh, the majority of all members of the Senate. 
if that's all right with my good, gen, with my good uh, friend from Cavite. As I mentioned earlier, I think the point raised by Senator Poe is that the decision to determine an occurrence of, of uh, emergency should be uh, should rest on the the, the uh, Senate as a body as a whole. Yes, mm -hmm. not I just agree. Uh, I agree. the Senate President or uh, in in uh, consultation with the majority and minority leaders. I agree, Mr. President. I agree. Actually, we, with that, we can just specifically mend the first two lines of. Uh, Section 41, uh, because we have to bear in mind, and I was just given this by our secretariat, that we are not adopting a special rule. We are adopting, we are amending our general rules. In other words, once we amend this, we have to publish it, and it will now be in our rule book, yung rules natin, uh, libro. So we are adopting or amending a general rule, which are rules of the Senate, mother rule po natin yan. So it's not advisable that it should be limited to one specific condition like this pandemic. So what we can do is come up with a general rule. If there's an emergency or, or a force majeure, uh, we, could, we could allow the Senate to do so, but the Senate uh, senators, all the majority senators must agree to it. Maybe the phrase as may be determined by the Senate. Yes. Or the majority of the uh, senators. Members of the Senate, yes, sir. Oh, yes, but perhaps that will be just a, a, a line after the after Section 41 or somewhere, somewhere yes, because Section 41, which originally states, uh, states that the president, after consultation with the majority leader and the minority leader, respectively, may postpone the holding of the session on a day to day. That's what it is. That's what it is. Opo. You know, postpone of day-to-day -day adjournment. Dati na yun, nandiyan yung rule na yun eh. That's the general oh, rule, Mr. That's President. That's the general yeah, rule, the general so okay yun. But when you declaring a national emergency, uh, that, should, that can be included in, let's say, letter C. You know, uh, after A, B, C. Opo. So All right? Yes, sir. In we the period accept. of amendments, perhaps we can uh, work on that. Yes, sir. I have uh, two uh, amendments, uh, likewise, that very, very... Um, uh, short Thank amendments. You. Thank you. So Thank at the you, proper uh, time, sorry. after the period of interpolation. But let, uh, if uh, Senator Lachson is done, he still has the floor. Mm -hmm. So, Yes, Mr. President. Uh, moving on, Mr. President. Uh, Rule 11, Section 22, encompasses the holding, conducting of meetings and or hearings you know, through teleconference. Mm. Ang uh, concern lang dito, Mr. President, for instance, does this also apply to inquiries in aid of legislation? A case in point, Mr. President, suppose that in the course of an investigation that we're conducting, one of the witnesses or source persons uh, has lied under oath, you know, and there's a need to cite him for contempt. How do we do that, Mr. President? How do we vote and how do we cite uh, a resource person in contempt of the committee and the Senate? Well, um, technically, How will we are be detained. Yes, sir. Technically, for example, what we're going through now, where the screen has all the members of the Senate, um, presumably, the members that will be uh, shown there will actually be the resource persons, um, and uh, when they take their oath, they'll also have to take their oath uh, through video conference or teleconference. It will be live. So when they well, take I'm their not oath, a lawyer, Mr. President, okay. but uh, being administered. An oath necessitates physical presence. Well, I'm not a lawyer as well, Mr. President. Maybe we can ask our uh, law. We have Senator Tolentino here, Senator, Senator Gordon. Gordon yeah. um, you have to take your oath before. In face to face? An uh, administering sir? officer. It cannot be done face to face. So I guess there are certain limitations, I believe, Mr. President, in the conducting of uh, committee hearings to teleconferencing. I think the more uh, they, sensitive well, well, one. Well, um, if you will confine it to your proposal, which is the committee may conduct meetings or hearings through teleconferencing, video, etc., etc., it appears that you are pertaining to simple yes, meetings sir. and hearings committee of the committee. Education, commission on education, commission health. Pero in, in um, inquiries, in aid of legislation, or something to that effect, perhaps uh, they c yes, sir. We, we, this may yes. not apply. Yes, sir. Actually, the, this will not also prevent the chairperson Hello. to conduct committees face to face in other words this will not be the exempt this will not be the rule in other words this will not apply uh, yes. on inquiries in aid of legislation yes sir 
So like the Blue Ribbon Committee of the Distinguished uh, Gentleman from yeah, well. San Valles can continue his hearing here in the plenary session if he so wishes. Then I would suggest you know, that we should uh, spell it out, Mr. President. Yeah. No, um, we, we can amend, we, we can include this, you know, but this, again, this will only refer to simple meetings and hearings of the committees. But when it comes to in case of legislation, inquiries in case of legislation, we have a separate resolution for that. We have a separate rule. Section. section. Oh, resolution number five, uh, passed by the Senate, uh, rules of procedure governing inquiries in aid of legislation. This this is not covered. Yes, sir. By this particular. It remains. It remains. As it is. remains. You yes. will have to conduct a physical uh, yes. inquiry. Yes, sir. In that case, if we agree on that, uh, then uh, yes. so be it. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Yes, Senator Larson. Yes. Uh, going to Rule 14, Section 41, it authorizes the Senate President with the consent of the Majority Leader and Minority Floor Leader <coughs> of the Senate either to postpone the holding of the session on the day-to-day -day adjournment or with the consent of the House of Representatives convene and hold session through teleconference, video conference, etc., etc. Now, my question is, considering that both houses of Congress mm. adopt mm. their own rules of proceedings and are allowed to punish its members in accordance with its own rules, why do we still have, or why do we still need the consent of the House of Representatives? The, that is my uh, amendment number one on okay. the resolution. Uh, we, we shall remove that line. Yes, yes, thank you. That That's is my first my amendment, amendment. Mr. President. If we need not uh, have the consent, the consent of the House of Representatives. Yes. yes. Because they did You're also, um, uh, well, um, that was, uh, uh, I should have uh, removed that in our amendment also, Mr. President, but we can do it in the period right, of okay. amendment. Yes, yes, the period right. of amendment, we can do that. Because they actually did teleconferencing without our consent as well during the uh, special session. <laughs> so and it's not I accept, Mr. President, that removal. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> now, my last uh, point, last item, Mr. President. It, if a vote is required, how will our vote be taken, Mr. President? Uh, on any undertaking, on any... The undertaking, on any can we allow voting uh, even if we are not physically present in the session hall? Yes, well, sir. I think so, yes. yes then uh, we should also amend the uh, Rule 31. Is it 31? 41. Rule 41, Section 117, Mr. President. XL1, 41. Section 41, uh, Section 117, which states that the vote of the senator absent from the session at the moment he is called to vote, shall not be counted. So we, I think we, there's a need to revisit or to visit that uh, particular uh, rule, uh, Senate rule, and amend it as well, Mr. Yes. President. If we, yes, Mr. Uh, President. if we agree to allow a senator to vote in absentia, yes, or via teleconference. By teleconferencing. Yes, uh, we, we can, and, and uh, the, once we approve the, this, resolu this resolution, uh, the senator in the teleconference is deemed present, and yes. therefore he can vote. He or yes, she can vote. But just to be sure, we can amend yeah. that uh, particular we provision. We can also include this. Yes. So it yes. Will be yes, just to be sure. It's all right. What we can do, Mr. President, for the benefit of our colleagues, we can have a clean copy. As soon as we make the amendments, We'll take in consideration the proposal of Senator Laxon and come up with a clean copy for, for uh, adoption. If that would right. be all for my uh, Thank interpretation. You, At the proper time, I will introduce my amendments, Mr. President. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Thank you Mr. President. Senator Tolentino is recognized. Just a quick manifestation, Mr. President, and to, to clarify uh, certain constitutional matters and I, I congratulate the good sponsor majority leader for opening the hybrid window in this parliamentary discussion because it would settle a lot of the constitutional ambiguities we have right now Mr. President. Mr. President nakalagay po dito sa sa ating saligang batas uh, and I'm referring to section 6 article 6 of the Constitution, and I quote sa Tagalog, ang alinman sa dalawang kapulungan sa panahon ng mga pagpupulong ng Kongreso ay hindi dapat magtindig ng pulong na mahigit tatlong araw o 
lumipat sa alinmang puok na iba sa sadyang pulungan ng dalawang kapulungan ng hindi kasangayon ang isa't isa. And I quote the last portion in English, Mr. President. Without the consent of the other, no, adjourn for more than three days, nor to any other place than that in which the two houses shall be sitting. Kaya ko po binanggit yan, Mr. President. When we say that we, we sit in one house, it refers to the venue. And this is the venue, this chamber. Pag po tayo ay lumipat sa isang lugar, ang ibig sabihin po niyan, we transfer collectively. Ganun po ang ginawa ng Kongreso ng Mababang Kapulungan nung sila po ay nagkaroon ng, special, ng isang sesyon sa Batangas City after the Taal Volcano Eruption. And if I am correct, Mr. President, the lower house secured the consent of the Senate when they conducted a session in Batangas City. They wrote us, Mr. President. What I'm yes, saying is they, this, they, we, we, we were simply informed. Uh, informed. They did not ask for our concurrence. Correct, Mr. President. What I'm saying is this. If a chamber decides to conduct an event, ang sinasabi ko, para hindi po tayo magkaproblema sa, sa... Ako po ay isang ayon sa teleconferencing. Kaya lang, dito sa Saligang Batas, baka magkaproblema po tayo sa constitutionality in terms of moving out of this session hall. <laughs> Because we will have, we will be having 23 session halls, contrary to the provision. I, I'm being too restrictive here. I, I would have uh, wanted, I, I wanted to have a short presentation, Mr. President, but uh, makakat po itong mga kaibig, uh, mga kaskolis natin na naka nagmomonitor, nagmomonitor ngayon. So hindi ko na po minention ko na lang po yon. So what I'm saying is this. The word hybrid mentioned by the majority leader is a good fusion of what we intend to do to protect the health, safety of our colleagues as well as the members of the staff as well as to comply with the constitutional requirement without leaving the session hall similar to what the lower house is doing right now. But dahil bago po ito, hybrid, se hybrid session. 25 members are present in the plenary hall. The rest are present via virtual proceedings. Kaya tama po yung sinabi ni Majority Floor Leader, the platform we will have. Mm -hmm. This will be the hub. Uh, the hub will not be a residence or an office outside of this session mm -hmm. hall, but this will be the hub of whether it is Zoom or Google. Ready to resume, Mr. President. Uh, majority Leader. Ready to resume. Uh, Mr. President, um, may we now open the period of amendments and recognize our Senate President. The Is there any objection? There being none, motions approved. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, majority Leader, thank you very much. On uh, page two. Any objection? No objection from me. There being none, motion. It's found in section 41 of our rules. Um, it is, Mr. President, just for clarity. All the members of the Senate. Good. I accept, Mr. President. There are motions I accepted. Accept. Is there any objection? There being none, motions approved. Thank you. We can go All back. right. Any other uh, amendment? Uh, if, if there is none, Mr. Majority Leader, Mr. Sponsor, I have uh, an amendment on page 3, line 3. And this will also fortify the proposal of Senator Tolentino. Page 3, line 3. Um, insert a, a new paragraph which reads, Notwithstanding the foregoing, Senators who elect to be physically... I accept. Uh, insert, uh, the Is there any objection? There being none. Motions approved. Please proceed, Senator Laxon. And insert... Uh, after the word emergency, the phrase as determined by a majority of all the members of the Senate. I accept, Mr. President. I so move, Mr. Chair. Mr. Is there any objection? There being none, motions approved. Thank you, Mr. President. Huh? Okay, good. Okay, Mr. President, with that, uh, no further amendments. Uh, Senator Toritino, with that, uh, no further amendments. I've moved to close the period of uh, amendments. Mr. Is there any objection? There being none, motions approved. 
Mr. President, I move that we adopt proposed Senate Resolution Number um, 372, subject to all the amendments and subject to style. Is there any objection? There being none, motion is approved. Mr. President, Resolution with, the is approved. with the permission of the Majority Leader, we would like to move that we suspend the session, and it, during the suspension, we will um, uh, we will uh, set up the other members of the Senate who are here now for the teleconferencing to proceed, and we may proceed we, already as soon as we okay. show. And uh, we Mr. can President. call the uh, uh, Senator Dillon is uh, asking, uh, yes. Mr. President. Yes, Mr. President, you, you may recognize Senator Dillon since we already have approved and adopted the motion. Yes, uh, Senator Dillon is uh, recognized. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President, and uh, thank you to uh, the uh, Senate President and the Majority Leader for coming up with uh, uh, this uh, resolution and a remedy to the uh, procedure in the Senate uh, session given the pandemic that we have today. Uh, this is a departure from uh, the rules that we know from the tradition in the Senate, particularly uh, on presence and voting. And uh, I have not intervened, uh, although I was one. Uh, this rule is now in our statute books. When do we determine when we can avail of the teleconferencing and when must, uh, and when are instances when we can only allow uh, debates and voting when you are on the floor? Or is this a rule that can now be followed on a daily basis or only in an emergency? Uh, Mr. President. And how long, assuming in an emergency, how long will uh, the, the uh, uh, privilege of participating through teleconference last? Yes. Yes, uh, Mr. President, to answer that question, actually, we can now avail of this rule that we just adopted. And therefore, uh, we are allowing the participation of our colleagues that are at home uh, and uh, joining us yes. to teleconferencing. So the rule yes. is now adopted. We can now proceed with teleconferencing as our mode of communications and uh, with the uh, Senate sessions together with colleagues who want to attend physically. So in the that, just, a, just a point of clarification. Yes, sir. An emergency need not be present. In other words, <coughs> on uh, uh, in July or in August, when presumably there, there is no emergency, we yeah. can go on teleconference and we can conduct sessions and transactions it must be through teleconference, or are we required to be present? Uh, Mr. President, uh, I believe the, the, the discussion earlier, the approval of our rules, uh, the new adoption of rules, it must be under the determination of the majority of the members of the Senate. So if there is an, emer national, there's an emergency, national so emergency, we will continue uh, with this uh, setup until the majority of the members deem that it is no longer necessary. Correct? I'm sorry. Can I be clarified? Can the uh, exercise of that prerogative of going through teleconferencing can be availed of only in case there is an emergency or uh, in normal times? Can the majority vote? that we can now conduct uh, sessions through teleconferencing? Uh, no, because we have a call atelier that it's, it says that it has to be a national emergency or force majeure. So, if, so it's, uh, if it's not a national emergency or there are no acts of God or force majeure uh, as determined by the majority, majority. members of the Senate, we uh, po tayo magkakaroon ng teleconferencing. All right, so I just wanted to put that of record that this uh, teleconferencing it's not the new normal. It is yeah. only an exception yes. to, uh, yeah, an yes. exception <laughs> to yes. what we know. Because there is a lot of implications. As, uh, for example, uh, most important is voting uh, uh, by tradition and by rule. Unless you are physically present in the session hall, you cannot vote. A senator cannot vote. Uh, cannot interpolate, cannot do anything. Now, but uh, we depart from all those traditions and the rules in case okay. the majority decides that we must, uh, we, we can allow teleconferencing and only, and only where there is an emergency. That's correct, yes, sir. Then, uh, or force majeure. That's in other correct, words, correct. If, uh, they, if in a shiny day, uh, 
you know, there is no emergency, nothing. The, uh, yes. the uh, rule cannot be, uh, the rule that we must be physically present mm. cannot be overturned by <laughs> a, yes. an opinion of the majority or a motion of the majority converting to or allowing teleconferencing. I just want to make that clear, Mr. That, majority. That is leader. absolutely correct. Um, during our discussion with Senator Laxo, the distinguished gentleman from Cavite, we made it very clear that this is an exception rather than the rule. And uh, mm -hmm. we pointed out uh, what were the exemptions. Basically, it's written also down in our rules. It has to be uh, due to force majeure or mm -hmm. uh, national mm -hmm. emergencies. We actually removed the word. We added the word emergency with the word. So it has to be a national mm -hmm. emergency that prevents us from attending session. And it has to be okay. determined by the majority of the senators as well. Again, the, the uh, operative uh, phrase is an, in a national emergency. In other words, it cannot be done in the future wherein uh, members of the, the Senate would like to add one or two votes into a certain uh, voting <laughs> and uh, yes. allow yes. anybody from uh, teleconferencing to vote. Uh, I, I, I see the point uh, of yes. the gentleman. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't want that to happen. Uh, it yes. is only when we, you know, only in an emergency situation or force majeure, uh -huh. uh, can the can mm -hmm. we have uh, sessions through teleconference? <laughs> absent this situ absent this circumstance, we cannot have uh, a session through teleconferencing. That's absolutely correct, uh, to our minority. Right. Yeah. And with that absolutely. clarification, yes, yes I have been uh, uh, clarified. So that even if the majority decides mm. that uh, that uh, we go, uh, we go teleconferencing, if there is no national emergency or force majeure, that decision is invalid. Is that correct? Uh, that is absolutely Mr. correct, Mr. Correct. President. Correct. Absolutely correct. Okay, All right. Thank you. Just wanted to clarify Mr. that. President, uh, I'm so may I just put for the record, with your permission, um, the uh, members that are now online. I believe that you need to. Uh, count them in as present as well. Since we are yes, they have all appeared after the roll call. Would you like to name yes. them? Uh, That's right. For of course, starting with our minority floor leader, Senator Frank Julon is with us. We have Senator Risa Ontiveros, Senator Pia Cayetano uh, present online. We have uh, Senator um, Cynthia Villar, who I think just took a restroom break, but she'll be back soon. Uh, we also have with are us. Are you sure uh, that is Senator Villar, not uh, <laughs> Diana? <laughs> We also have uh, Senator Edgardo uh, Sani Angara. Uh, we have also with us uh, Amy Marcos and uh, Senator uh, Kiko Pangilinan. Uh, who else? Uh, and Pia, Senator, of course, Senator Pia Caetano is with us as well. Mr. Mr. President, yes, yeah, may I? Uh, a while ago, I was asking for a suspender to verbally say that he or she is present uh, in the teleconferencing. No? That's one. Then, then uh, I said next week because uh, the plan is if you, uh, the, the members who are here agreed that uh, we, sus we merely suspend uh, tonight and uh, resume tomorrow and resume on Wednesday and adjourn on Wednesday so that um, the teleconferencing uh, um, the roll call will Mr. start President. next week. Mr. President? Yeah. Yes, uh, Mr. President, may we Where recognize is? Senator Julon, Mr. President? Yes. Uh, Mr. President, uh, how long will this privilege of being able to participate to teleconferencing last? Until there is uh, uh, cases Until of uh, uh, COVID-19 contamination mm. or this is determined by the uh, members of the Senate under our resolution. Uh, well, <laughs> you know, that is not a political question, uh, issue that can be resolved. It is our basically health problems. I have no problems whatever is the rule is. I just want to know when the privilege of teleconference, of attending session and voting through teleconference uh, uh, can be adopted or will be allowed uh, uh, currently. Uh, is there a period? In other words, uh, uh, if there is no longer, uh, how do you call it? The, the C, uh, ECQ. Quarantine. If there is no longer ECQ, perhaps. In, in longer, if it's a longer or GCQ. ECQ. GCQ. Uh, or GCQ, uh, yes. GCQ. GCQ. Yes. Enhanced, if they're longer under enhanced uh, community quarantine, uh, 
No, your honor, no, general, general. The ECQ is, uh, is, is almost a lockdown. Eh. A general community quarantine is lighter. The powers in this issue, I have no yeah. objection whatsoever. It is just a question of uh, having definite rules. Uh, and, uh, because I don't want to be debating on this rule uh, when it happens already and we have no set standard. Yes. Actually, to be clear also, the president on March 16 declared uh, through a proclamation 929 declaring a state of calamity you know, throughout the Philippines yes. for a period of six yes. months. So, yes. um, if that is uh, some basis to our extension for that period, then um, with the removal of the majority of members of the Senate, we can continue with the uh, uh, teleconferencing. Well, the, the, the in the calamity, according to Senator Lacson, it should be a national emergency and not just a calamity. Well, the president state declared calamity is Proclamation 922 declaring a state of public health emergency. Yon, Does yeah, that that's also the correct, suffice? Uh, that would suffice. So there were two proclamations by the president. One declaring the a state of calamity, probably to allow the LGUs to utilize their state, uh, their calamity funds. And uh, second was... Uh, Proclamation 922, declaring the state of public health emergency. So, there it is. So, the okay. legal basis. are we saying that if the state of uh, public uh, health emergency stays there for the next one year, we can allow teleconferencing uh, for one year and voting in absentia for one year? I would well, like the to way, ask the Senate President to issue. make the... The way, the way it decision. looks now and the way it is written, it is six months. Then perhaps we can discuss it after six months. Well, uh, uh, I, I don't the, want the action of the Senate or the rules of the Senate be governed by an extraneous uh, action on the part of the, the executive, executive branch. Correct. We should decide on our own. If we say that the... Uh, Teleconferencing uh, method can be allowed until the end of uh, this session. Fine, if uh, it can end, uh, it will end at December of this of this year. Fine, uh, that is our prerogative uh, to determine our own, own set of procedures. My suggestion is uh, we allow we allow teleconferencing until June 30, the expiration of this Congress. And in July, when we go back, Discussing. if the situation still calls for it, we can have uh, the same resolution, uh, Mr. President, allowing teleconferencing. But I, I would like to suggest to that, uh, that our rules of procedure will be governed by uh, the uh, declaration of the President that the emergency is over. Uh, because we should have our own judgment as to when we can continue uh, with uh, this year, 2020, and subject to a debate again when the next Congress or the next session will convene on no. the fourth Monday of July. Is that a correct interpretation, sir? No, sir, uh, Mr. President, because no. um, we have to bear in mind that we are not adopting a special rule. We are, we are amending a general rule which are rules in the Senate, it's the mother rule, mother rule po natin yan, because we have to publish this. As soon as we, uh, uh, well, after today, we will ask the Secretary to publish this. So it's not really advisable uh, to my distinguished minority floor leader that we should limit it to one specific condition or limit it to a specific timeline. So what we did was we placed it in our rules, in our general rule, that during national emergencies or due to force majeure, we may be allowed to use teleconferencing or other video conferencing uh, technology, although with the condition that it is approved by the, ma the, the Senate, majority of the senators, or the Senate. Okay. Okay, thank you, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. MFL. Uh, yes, uh, yes, Senator Pia. Before, so before recognize. we recognize Senator Pia, with, uh, with, with uh, one, just one second. Uh, who would, uh, I believe Senator Gordon wants to be made the co-author as well as Senator um, Ping Lakson. With the permission of the body, let's make all members uh, the co-author of uh, this resolution, Mr. President. Is, there, for the is there any objection? There being none, motions approved. Uh, Senator Pia is uh, recognized. 
Thank you. Can I just um, inform everyone that there is a raise hand function. Um, if you click on participants and then there's a raise hand function on your name, so maybe the secretariat can assist um, the presiding officer and the MFL because that's the, instead of us, if, if three people wanted to speak, then we're all like, you know, yes. so there's a raise hand function that can be used Mr. for Brent. orderly conduct of business, which I've been trying to do. Yeah, sorry. Anyway, Mr. President, um, that is precisely why we, why I was asking that we suspend because the presiding officer will be given a monitor, uh, a main monitor uh, of our service provider, and that will, uh, the, the monitor will have all the members uh, there, including the plenary session, and the, 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 the point uh, made by Senator Caetano, Pia Caetano, about the hand raising will be there, will be incorporated there. So. It, it, it's both the Senate President and the Majority Leader who, were the, who will have the same monitors and they will see who is asking for the floor and um, they will be acknowledged. Uh, right now we don't have it but after the suspension we will be able to set it up already. They are ready to set it up as soon as we suspend. So, so, so is, that, is there a motion to suspend yes. sessions? Yes. May just before we suspend session, Mr. President, may I request of our colleagues that are in video teleconferencing not to leave together with our colleagues here because right after we are going to participate on third reading on the alternative learning system uh, for third reading and we will test the system we'll test uh, this system that we have now so please uh, um, observe no of course we, we decide on our own but I'm, i i feel very strongly that that the the executive would like us to take a look at um, I, I have made the decision that when necessary, I have to be physically present. But, you know, every time you step are you for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we we uh, agree on most of, most of all the, or almost all the points of Senator Pia. On the uh, e-signatures, I believe we, already, we have already agreed during our caucus uh, on Zoom the other week that, um, that we already allow the e-signatures as long as it is... Uh, uh, Signed, countersigned by the chiefs of staff. I believe uh, our distinguished uh, Senate secretary is nodding her head. So they're already accepting uh, e-signatures as long as it's confirmed by your COS and only your confirmed COS. How? Confirmed how? How confirmed? How? You want, her, you want paper? That's why I said it should be confirmed by text message. That should be, that should be enough. Um, that, that to me is the if adjustment we, that we should make up uh, what they're going to send the document to yes. the chiefs of staff if the lady senator from Taguig will allow um, that's why we'll suspend after the approval of all these measures so that we can come up with our teleconferencing protocols uh, we're going to come out with some teleconferencing protocols and uh, rules while conducting uh, simple rules internal rules and while we're conducting our teleconference and video conference because even this mere raising of hands um, uh, the, who will unmute the, un, the mute button? Because uh, I, I don't want to mute and unmute. Gusto ko po ang Senate President. I will just uh, uh, announce who is uh, uh, online. I do not want to mute my Ninong, Ninong Dick Gordon. Magagalit sa akin yan kung minute ko siya. So I will leave that, that, I will leave that decision to the Senate President or the presiding officer. So, um, there's an agreement here on the floor because uh, they'd like to go home. Uh, many of them would like to uh, escape uh, from any uh, uh, possible uh, contamination. Uh, so, we will tackle already third reading of, uh, we'll go continue already to third reading of the alternative learning system. Uh, and then after which we will uh, tackle the uh, resolution of distinguished gentleman from Cavite, Senator uh, Tolentino had uh, uh, indicated in our meeting last week that uh, in the United States, even if they conduct video conferencing, they must have uh, still proper decorum in terms of... Uh, yes. yes. Uh, so at least, uh, according to Senator Gachelian, even Sana just the top. He doesn't care what you were under, but what you were on top is very important <laughs> to provide proper decorum. So... <laughs> There's a lot of side comments, but I will no longer <laughs> put that on record. Uh, Mr. President, I move that we approve 
On third reading, Senate Bill Number One Three. And in special extreme cases and appropriating funds, therefore. Is there any objection? There being none. We we'll proceed with the roll call vote. Uh, please vote. proceed with the roll call vote. Laxon. Lapid. Marcos. The results of the vote for Senate Bill number 1365 is 22 affirmative votes. I have it. Thank you, Mr. President. Congratulations to the sponsors, Senator Gachalian, and to all the authors. Mr. President, um, I move with the permission of the body that we consider Senate Resolution number 363 uh, take and uh, taking consideration Senate Resolution number 371. So moved, Mr. President. Is there any objection? There being none, motion is approved. Here, uh, Mr. President, um, I make an amendment to my motion. Member of the House of Representatives, 1998 to 2001, and former member of the cabinet. Mr. President, may we recognize our distinguished Senate President, Senator uh, Vicente uh -huh. Soto III, to sponsor this measure. Senator President, is uh, recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. The majority leader, thank you. Mr. President, I join the rest of the nation in mourning the passing of a respectable leader and a good friend, former Senator Hiyerson Sani Alvarez, last April 20, 2020. I had the great opportunity to learn from, his, from this reasonable and hardworking lawmaker as a neophyte senator in 1992 when I first joined this August body. We were even together during the campaign of 1992. <clears throat> Senator Sani Alvarez will always be remembered as a freedom fighter, a land reform champion, a debater par excellence, an environmental warrior, a human rights advocate, an exemplary lawmaker, an exceptional statesman, a fearless leader, a dedicated public servant, a patriot, and a respectable Filipino. Even after his stint as lawmaker, his burning passion for public service continued. His giving of advice on legislative matters and current issues did not cease. As a matter of fact, he last visited my office in November last year with his wife to seek support for the National Commission of Culture and the Arts. He truly was a dedicated public servant. I feel more pain with this loss as we, the members of the Senate and our counterparts in the House of Representatives, cannot give him the proper recognition and reverence due to a former member of the Congress. Given that his passing comes during this time when the country is gripped by this uh, infectious fatal virus and a necrological ceremony cannot possibly be held. To his family, especially to his wife, Cecil, and his children, may you find solace in the thought that he is now free of any suffering. He's now peacefully watching over you as you continue your life's journey. His legacy will live on in the hearts and minds of the people, and his name will forever be etched in our country's rich history. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> May we recognize the distinguished uh, gentleman from Zambales, colleague uh, in the student movements in the 70s, Mr. President, particularly in the National Union of Student Movement, uh, where we supported the candidacy of Arturo Macapagal in the NUS, and many other opportunities, Mr. President. Sonny Alvarez was a very, very dis uh, distinguished man. He was a great orator. He had no mean bone in his body. And he made sure that he took stands, Mr. President. It is true that he was an environmental warrior, Mr. President. But he also spoke on principle. Both of us also, during the Constitutional Convention, uh, were uh, you know, seen walking out during the speech of the former President Marcos at that time. But uh, we were really having a little joke at that time. We didn't really walk out. We went to the restroom at the time. That is something I could never forget, Mr. President, because uh, uh, we were doing this together uh, without any uh, uh, prior conference uh, about it, Mr. President. 
Uh, Mr. President, uh, uh, Sally Alvarez, as you know, as we all know, uh, worked very, very hard for the environment. He had terrific uh, positions on the matter. He was a distinguished senator and congressman from the Fourth District of Isabella. And certainly, Mr. President, he was an advisor on overseas Filipino communities for a long time. He was a staunch human rights activist, Mr. President, and uh, uh, made known his opposition very, very well to certain administrations in the past, Mr. President. And so he was also forced to go into exile in the United States, together with Raul Banglapus, after the declaration of martial law, where he founded, uh, which eventually resulted in the introduction of unleaded gasoline to the market in February uh, of 1994, Mr. President. Uh, he was also involved in international advocacies on the environment with the United Nations Environmental Program. Uh, he had the first Asia-Pacific Leaders Conference on Climate Change in Manila on 21 February 1995, which resulted in the Manila Declaration that recognized the risk posed by climate change to small island states and coastal and other nations of the Asia-Pacific region. Mr. President, he has won many awards. You know, awards are really nice to have, but uh, in reality, uh, his deeds speak for himself. I could cite many of his awards. I don't have to because it's already in the record of his life, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, uh, uh, while we mourn the loss of an exceptional leader and visionary uh, who dedicated his life for the good of the country and the Filipino people, fighting for what is right and rash and just and championing issues for the benefit of our future generations, Mr. President, I would also like to f point out that he really fought the good fight. Uh, I, I really certainly uh, commiserate with his family, particularly my good friend Cecil Alvarez, who also uh, appeared in, uh, who also worked with my sisters in plays, or for that matter, in his advocacy for in her advocacy for children, the indigenous communities, and the environment, Mr. President. I know that he, she's in deep shock up to now. She's really uh, mourning. They're, they're strong partners. Their marriage stayed through the years and got stronger every year. Now, uh, Mr. President, I spoke with his daughter, Sulika, uh, at the time of his uh, uh, passing. And Sulika had a request that he would like uh, to say, and I, was, I, I have to say this here, Mr. President, that, uh, uh, on the, that he would like to request the uh, the Senate to remember his father, particularly on the matter of the fact that you know, while they were having that fight, they were looking for blood and they got blood from the Red Cross and therefore he would like, she would like to ask the Senate if we would have a blood day on the occasion of the birthday and the death anniversary of uh, uh, Senator Alvarez. And that we would be glad to do in the Red Cross provided, of course, uh, the Senate as a whole approve and urge our colleagues here to provide that blood that is so necessary that was able to save the life, I suppose, of uh, Cecil Guidotti Alvarez and, of course, Sunny Alvarez in his fight. And therefore, Mr. President, I would like to uh, ask that not only should we have a resolution honoring this uh, great man, but also to make sure to respect the wishes of his daughter that we exercise uh, blood donation on the day of his birthday and on the day of his passing. So move, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Villanueva. It's Thank you. recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm also one of the, uh, I also filed a resolution expressing the profound sympathy and uh, sincere condolences to, uh, of the Senate on the death of uh, Honorable Harrison Alvarez, a former senator, environmental advocate, and human rights activist. I will no longer deliver this speech, Mr. President. Uh, uh, and may I just be allowed to move that uh, this speech be inserted into the records, Mr. President? So moved. Noted. Thank you. Majority Leader. Mr. President, the, yes, uh, may we recognize some. Um, for adoption by an, uh, privately, privately. Uh, Mr. President, yes, um, also being one of the
principal authors of the resolution, Mr. President, I, I join my colleagues in expressing our profound sympathy and sincere condolences to the family of the Honorable Sonny, Harrison Sonny Turingan Alvarez. I've had the opportunity of serving with him, not as a senator, but as a member of the 11th Congress. It was the controversial 11th Congress. Senator Ralph Recto was with us. Um, he graduated onwards to becoming a senator. And um, we also had, uh, uh, at that time, 29 members of the minority. He was one of our 29 members in the minority, the brave minority that uh, at that time had signed the impeachment complaint against the former president, uh, Joseph Estrada. And he was, I believe, one of our, uh, he was one of the uh, legal luminaries that helped defend the position of the minority at the time. So uh, I also mourn his passing because till the end, we were together in our advocacy against bullying, anti-bullying and anti-hazing. Um, so much so that um, we were together in a forum a uh, couple of months ago in Manila Hotel together with former Senator Joey Lina uh, condemning you know, the hazing death of uh, PMA, -er, I believe, at uh, that time, uh, even after the passage of our new law. So uh, you can see, even if he no longer is a member of the Senate, no longer a member of Congress, he was still very active on issues on uh, human rights, anti-hazing, and uh, environmental issues, uh, issues that tackled environment and climate change. He was our resident uh, climate change expert uh, next to Senator uh, um, Lauren Legarda, who's also another climate change champion. So um, we mourn his passing. I believe that uh, he, should, he could have still contributed a lot to our legislative um, advocacies. Um, and also, Mr. President, um, We'd like to ask also that the uh, speech, the, the sponsorship speech of Senator Nancy Binay be inserted for the record, uh, Mr. President. With that, uh, Mr. President, we move to close the period of sponsorship. I so move. Is there any objection? There being none, motion approved. There being no amendments, uh, I move that we, and interpolation, I move that we close the period of amendments and interpolation. There being no objection, there being none, motions approved. Mr. President, with that, I move that we adopt Senate Resolution Number 363, taking in consideration Senate Number, Senate Resolution Number 366, 371, and 382, subject to style, and to make all members of the Senate as authors of the measure. Is there any objection? There being none, motions approved. Thank you, Mr. President. May I ask for a quick suspension, Mr. President? One minute. Section is suspended.
We'll set up na daw the computers. Kuya Bong, Kuya Bong. I-transfer ko lang pare sa house. Sa refer pa lang yung information mo. Guys, can you give a copy for the third person but it could be in the
Ofku di to? Tak ofnu mana ya? Session resumed. Mr. Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, with the permission of the body, I move to proceed with the Senate President's designation of the Senate contingent on the Joint Congressional Oversight Committee on Universal Health Care. In, uh, in accordance with the uh, RA 11.223, we um, would like to designate Senators De La Rosa, Tolentino, Gordon, and Hontiveros as uh, members. Uh, the, of course, the chairperson would be the chairperson of the Committee on Health, uh, Senator Christopher Lawrence Go. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, um, speaking of Senator Bongo, I move that with the permission of the body that we consider PS Resolution Number 380, and ask the Secretary to read the title of the measure. 380, uh, any objection? Hearing none, the Secretary will read the title of the measure. Oh, my, sir. my apologies, Mr. President. May I withdraw that motion to allow uh, additional reference of business? This, so that uh, my apologies. This, uh, the motion is withdrawn. For an additional, yeah, move for additional reference of business. Secretary will proceed with the additional reference of business. 
Additional reference of business, messages from the House of Representatives. Letter from the House of Representatives informing the Senate that on 23 March 2020, it passed House Number 6616 entitled An Act Declaring the Existence of a National Emergency Arising from the Coronavirus Disease 2019 COVID-19 Situation and a National Policy in Connection Therewith and authorizing the President of the Republic of the Philippines for a limited period and subject to restrictions to exercise powers necessary and proper to carry out the declared national policy and for other purposes in which it requests the concurrence of the Senate. To the archives. Letter from the House of Representatives informing... The Senate that on 23 March 2020 it adopted Senate Concurrent Resolution No. 9 entitled Concurrent Resolution Creating a Joint Committee of Both Houses to Notify the President of the Philippines that Congress has convened in its first special session and there being a quorum said Congress has already entered upon the exercise of its functions. To the archives. Letter from the House of Representatives informing the Senate that on 23 March 2020, it adopted House Concurrent Resolution No. 7 entitled Concurrent Resolution Providing for the Adjournment of the First Special Session of the 18th Congress of the Philippines not later than 12 o'clock midnight today, Monday, March 23, 2020, in which it requests the concurrence of the Senate. To the archives. Bills on first reading, Senate number 1457, entitled An Act Authorizing the Deferment of the Start of the School Year in Times of Emergencies and Calamities, amending for the purpose Republic Act number 7977 and for other purposes, introduced by Senator Tolentino. To the Committee on Basic Education. Senate number 1458, an act authorizing the shortening of the school year and mass promotion of students in times of emergencies and calamities, amending for the purpose Republic Act number 7977 and for other purposes, introduced by Senator Tolentino. To the Committee on Basic Education. Senate number 1459, an act establishing the Tertiary Online Learning and Distance Education Office under the Commission on Higher Education, amending Republic Act number 10650, otherwise known as Open Distance Learning Act, and for other purposes, introduced by Senator Tolentino. To the Committee on Higher Education and Science and Technology. Senate number 1460, an act expanding the basic education curriculum, increasing the functions of the Bureau of Learning Delivery under the Department of Education to include distance education and online learning, thereby amending Public Act number 10533, otherwise known as the Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013, and for other purposes, introduced by Senator Tolentino. To the Committee on Basic Education and uh, Higher Education. Senate number 1461, an act enforcing measures to mitigate the spread of contagious diseases in the community and select public establishments and events and for other purposes, introduced by Senator Pacquiao. To the Committee on Health and Demography. Senate number 1462, <coughs> an act renewing the franchise granted to the University of the Philippines system to construct, establish, maintain, and operate for educational and other related purposes, radio and television broadcasting stations within the University of the Philippines and such other areas within the scope of its operation under Republic Act number 8160 to another 25 years, introduced by Senator Villanueva. To the Committee on Rules. Senate number 1463, an act prohibiting the active use and display of commercial billboards during typhoons, introduced by Senator Villanueva. To the Committee on Public Works. Senate number 1464, an act amending Republic Act number 7743, <coughs> otherwise known as an act providing for the establishment of congressional, city, and municipal libraries and barangay reading centers throughout the Philippines and for other purposes, introduced by Senator Villanueva. To the Committee on uh, Basic Education, <coughs> Local Government, and Finance. Senate number 1465, an act providing for a Magna Carta of commuters, introduced by Senator Villanueva. To the Committee of Public Services. Senate number 1466, an act redefining the crime of illegal recruitment committed by a syndicate, amend amending for the purpose Article 38 of Presidential Decree number 442, otherwise known as the Labor Code of the Philippines, as amended, and Section 6 of Republic Act number 8042, otherwise known as the Migrant Workers and Overseas Filipinos Act of 1995, as amended, introduced by Senator De Lima. To the Committees on Labor and Foreign Relations. Senate number 1467, an act providing measures to ensure pedestrian safety and convenience and providing penalties for violations thereof, introduced by Senator De Lima. To the Committees on uh, Public Services and Public Works. Senate number 1468, an act enhancing the social protection responses of the government to the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, introduced by Senator De Lima. To the Committees on uh, Social Justice and uh, Finance. Senate number 1469, an act supporting the growth and development of digital careers in the Philippines, introduced by Senator Angara. To the Committees on Labor, Science, Technology, and Finance. Senate number 1470, an act providing for a national digital transformation policy and for other purposes, introduced by Senator Angara. To the Committees on Science, Technology, and Finance. 
Senate Number 1471 enact amending certain provisions of Republic Act Number 11036, otherwise known as the Mental Health Act, introduced by Senator Angara. To the Committee on Health. Senate Number 1472, an act establishing the Philippine e-health system and services in support of universal health care using information and communications technology in the Philippines and appropriating funds, therefore, introduced by Senator Angara. To the Committees on Health, Science, Technology, and Finance. Senate Number 1473, an act institutionalizing an installment payment scheme on basic utility bills during calamities and for other purposes to be known as the Three Gives Law, introduced by Senator Tolentino. To the Committee on Public Services. Senate Number 1474, an act providing an economic stimulus strategy for the effects of the coronavirus disease COVID-19 and appropriating funds, therefore, Senator, introduced by Senator Recto. To the Committees on Economic Affairs, Ways and Means, and Finance. Resolutions, PS Resolution Number 378, Resolution directing the appropriate Senate committees to conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation on the revitalization of the cultural and creative industry in the new normal, introduced by Senator Poe. To the Committees on Basic Education and Labor. PS Resolution Number 379, Resolution directing the Senate Committee on Public Services to conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation on the resumption of public transport in order to immediately restore mobility and livelihood while still observing social distancing measures and other health and safety protocols introduced by Senator Poe. To the Committee on Public Services. PS Resolution Number 380, entitled Resolution Urging the Executive Department to formulate and implement a Balik Provincia Program introduced by Senator Bo. Refer to the Committee on Rules. PS Resolution Number 381, entitled Resolution Directing the Senate Committee on Health and Demography to Conduct an Inquiry in Aid of Legislation on the Alleged Refusal of Some Hospitals to Admit and Provide Necessary Emergency Treatment to Persons in Need of Immediate Medical Attention, introduced by Senator Go. To the Committee on Health. Mm. PS Resolution Number 383, Resolution Directing the Committee on Higher and Technical and Vocational Education to conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation on the status of the implementation and the achievements of the Open Distance Learning Act introduced by Senator Villanueva. To the Committee on Higher Education. PS Resolution Number 384, Resolution Directing the Senate Committee on Labor, Employment, and Human Resources Development and other appropriate Senate committees to conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation on the adequacy of on-site assistance and programs for overseas Filipino workers in light of the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic and the consequent overseas employment di displacements worldwide, introduced by Senator Villanueva. To the Committee on Labor. PS Resolution Number 385, Resolution Directing the Senate Committee on Women, Children, Family Relations, and Gender Equality, conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation on the rampant prolif proliferation and rising incidence of child cyber sex abuse in the Philippines, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic, with the end in view of proposing legislative measures and ensuring that the welfare of the Filipino youth and children are not neglected during a global health crisis, introduced by Senator De Lima. Referred to the Committee on Women. PS Resolution Number 386, Resolution Directing the Appropriate Senate Committee to conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation on the status of implementation of Republic Act Number 10533, otherwise known as the Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013, in relation to reports on the apparent difficulty in writing in English of senior high school students with the end in view of identifying the gaps of the current curriculum and proposing legislations that would ensure that the Filipino youth are indeed receiving the quality education they deserve, introduced by Senator De Lima. The Committee is on Basic Education and Youth. PS Resolution Number 387, Resolution Directing the Proper Senate Committee to Conduct an Inquiry in Aid of Legislation on the Status and Progress of the National Strategy to Address the Coronavirus Disease COVID-19 Pandemic with the end in view of addressing issues that may impede its progress, ensuring the reali realization of its objectives, restoring public trust and confidence on social and economic institutions, and sustaining government efforts towards recovery and normalcy, introduced by Senator Recto. To the Committees on uh, Economic Affairs and... Uh Health. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, with that, uh, with the permission of the body, I move that we consider uh, Senate Resolution Number 380 and ask the Secretary to read the title of the measure. <clears throat> the Secretary will read the title of the measure. Resolution urging the Executive Department to formulate and implement a Balik Provincia program. Mr. President, may we recognize Senator Bongo to sponsor the measure? Senator Christopher Bongo is recognized to sponsor the measure. 
sorry, sir. I'm sorry. Mr. President, he had requested that he just uh, we just insert to the records his sponsorship speech. My apologies, Mr. President. I didn't see the letter that was passed to me. All right, the sponsorship speech is inserted into the records. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator uh, Richard Gordon is recognized. Yes, Mr. President. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President. I just would like to uh, uh, co-sponsor that resolution with the permission of uh, Senator Go. Uh, the Senate will recall, Mr. President, that uh, during the last uh, year, we passed a resolution, uh, a law, on both houses of Congress called the Rich Bill, which purpose was to really uh, bring in uh, business and opportunities first to the Central Luzon region and uh, decongest Manila and disperse industries and bring in new investments uh, into this region. <coughs> This is supposed to be the progenitor of future uh, riches in uh, other areas like in Mindanao. Uh, and in as much as the administration has promised to do what they call a, a build, 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 uh, enhancing the infrastructure in the entire country, we should really be able to do uh, a lot of decongestion of Manila and disperse industries to areas like Western Visayas, Central Visayas, uh, Eastern Visayas, especially in the Salamata Global area, which is a very poor area. And certainly in the other parts of Mindanao, particularly uh, in the area of Zamboanga, which could be the hub. Again, the oil which could be the hub for Northern Luzon, uh, Northern uh, Mindanao. And in Eastern Mindanao, you could have it in Butuan or even Jansan, Mr. President. That is why I think it is important that I stand up today, principally because uh, you have areas like uh, the island of Panay, which is fairly complete in terms of airports and seaports. It is uh, filled with agriculture and uh, certainly uh, has uh, enough power, uh, and you could actually put it there. In Central Luzon, Mr. President, it would enhance areas like Aurora, uh, which has a uh, uh, aimed during the time of Senator Ed Angara, the father of our colleague, who was pushing for development in Aurora. Uh, and it's not because of its size, but because of its uh, strategic location in the Pacific, that we could have made uh, a port there, or even, for example, we were talking about even uh, some sort of a canal that would stretch from the Pacific Ocean to the China Sea, or even a highway from there uh, so that the development could reach out not only in Panay, uh, but only in Aurora, not only Central Luzon, but go all the way down to the Pacific side of Isabela, Cagayan, uh, Quirino, and all the other areas there. That is why, Mr. President, it is important that we reiterate that. It's such a pity that after so much effort by a lot of mayors and congressmen in Central Luzon, and after so many hearings outside of Metro Manila. I thought that uh, uh, President Duterte should have signed it. Now that uh, Senator Goh, he's always very obviously very close to the President, has now advocated a, a Balik Provincia uh, effort, I will support that, Mr. President, because I've always advocated, and I'm sure many of us have advocated, that. Manila should not just be what they call Imperial Manila. What is the purpose of building infrastructure if we do not accompany this with business? What is the purpose of building schools and universities and colleges if we do not accompany this with business? What is the purpose of creating speed in these areas of called, uh, uh, you know, airports and seaports? We are an archipelagic country. You could have the whole island of Negros be a, a country by itself in, in, in truth. And when you start comparing it with Singapore or Hong Kong, certainly, Negros alone is a lot, several times bigger than Singapore. And there's no reason why with all its educational uh, institutions, not only in Negros but nearby Parai, 
you could have development in these areas. See, that has always been the problem. Uh, I've always said that this country keeps looking at its own navel. Tumitigil lang tayo sa pusod natin, pero hindi natin tinitingnan yung mga opportunities na ginawa ng ibang basa. Nakakalungkot sapagat ang China about 30, 40 years ago, bago pumunta si President Marcos doon sa China and opened up relations there, napakahina ng China at the time. It was a bumbling giant. It had its, uh, let the towers, uh, thousand flowers bloom program, you know. Uh, and uh, what happened? Uh, it kept stumbling all over the place until Deng Xiaoping decided, well, we'll have one China, two systems, or even three systems. We will have, uh, uh, you know, not just Shanghai and Hong Kong will be developed. But, you know, in Changsha, for example, the province uh, in Hunan, uh, they're, They've developed, you know, the CPR, the PCRs that we're now using in the Red Cross to, to, uh, to, to test uh, for COVID. And yet, tayo na pabayaan natin yan because palagang nakatingin lang tayo dito sa Imperial Manila. <coughs> Kaya nagtataka ako, hanggang ngayon, gawa pa tayo ng gawa ng infrastructure, gawa pa tayo ng gawa ng mga universities dito, napupunta lahat yung pera dito sa Metro Manila. Pero hindi lumalabas at pupunta sa ibang bansa, sa, sa ibang bayan, sa ating mga kanayunan. And that is why, I don't even call it Balik Provincia. It's about time, Mr. President. It's about time that we start doing this. Even President Marcos had an 11-point program, including, this is not an original idea. President Marcos, Bobby Humpin, I remember, had this 11-point pro program where they would say, decongest Manila, disperse industries towards uh, different areas. That's why in Iligan, they, they thought of the steel mill. Or in uh, Samar, they had, uh, 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 if I'm not mistaken, the, uh, what was it, fertilizer plant or power plants all over the place. Uh, even the nuclear plant was part of it in Bataan. And I suppose without extolling, uh, uh, you know, without over the idea, I think, it's an idea that's nonetheless very, very important. So we might have an opportunity now uh, with this program. In fact, I was smiling a bit when the bar results came out. And I heard that my good friend, Senator uh, Gatshelian, what are they? <laughs> Senator, <laughs> Senator Villanueva, that was a deliberate error, Mr. President. Uh, he said that, uh, oh, mabuti, be, di na makakakansaw si Talipanda sa UST. But he forgets that UST is not the UST in Manila, it is the UST in Legaspi. In Bicol, in Bicol, in Bicol. So even in the field of law, a lot of people are beginning to flex their muscles, you know. There's no bar top lecture from UP and Ateneo. But this just shows the opportunity that is waiting. The internet has brought about a lot of reawakening in our people in the countryside. And now you can see, go to Cagayan de Oro, go to Negros, go to Iriguri City, and you can see development that is uh, rising there. And all we need to do is give it more push so that people don't have to leave their homes there and become a, a stranger in another city in our own country and have to compete with real estate in areas that are really overcrowded already and that are prone to creating disease all over the place. That is why, Mr. President, uh, we would like to start this by immediately coming out with a proposal, and that's why I, I will say tire a little before I agree with Satira, because Satira is now going to take away a lot of incentives from the BPOs, as well as from the other uh, areas in the economic zones. I would, I would tire a little before I vote for that, because rather than bringing them to the countryside, we might be closing it. And it is an opportunity, there, there, is, there is an opportunity now to bring our people to the countryside. There is also a threat of people leaving us because of not only COVID, but because of certain, uh, you know, uh, initiatives that might, instead of encourage, discouraging, uh, encouraging, it might dis start discouraging business into our country. I commend, therefore, our good friend, Senator Gore, our colleague. He, he sees an opportunity today. Now, dapat eh, 
magawa yan. But uh, of course, there are people who, before us, before me, uh, who have uh, thought of these ideas. Like I mentioned, uh, this is part of the program of uh, President Marcos, and I'm sure even President Garcia, President uh, Macapagal, President Magsaysay, President uh, Quirino had all these visions. You will remember that uh, every president that came, for example, from one region would try to put up all the infrastructure in their regions during that time to make sure that they can grow. And there's nothing wrong with that because, after all, you would like to make sure that so long as you don't neglect the other regions, you can actually uh, create more opportunity for these countries, uh, for these provinces, Mr. President. And so, Mr. President, uh, on that note, again, I say we are completely in support of the Balik Provincia. Mr. President, I can even cite you examples right now uh, that uh, things that we must do, but another time, perhaps, Mr. President, particularly in the area of uh, research and development that can be developed throughout the entire archipelago. And I will do that in the next uh, presentation, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Mr. President, and thank you, Senator Go. Senator Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. I got a text request from the Senate uh, Minority Floor Leader, but I'll just take it up with the Senate President after the session. <laughs> 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 Senator Frank. <laughs> anyway, um, he's reiterating his request, uh, Mr. President, uh, that I'll discuss with you later. But, um, Mr. President, we, we recognize other amendments. So, so. Yes, Mr. President, may we recognize the sponsor, Senator uh, Christopher Go, for his amendments. Senator uh, Bongo is recognized. Mr. President, uh, my dear colleagues, over the past few months, we have witnessed how the uh, COVID-19 global uh, pandemic put to test almost all nations in the world, causing uh, unprecedented stress on health facilities and pressure on governments worldwide, including those of many developed countries. In the Philippines, while our situation remains better off due to our quick response to the public health emergency, the pandemic has exposed and brought to the surface many of our country's perennial problems, include, including congestion in the urban centers, particularly in Metro Manila. Such problem results in a whole lot of other issues, including poverty, economic inequality, traffic jams, environmental issues, among others. More importantly, overcrowding in Metro Manila makes it more difficult to contain disease here, putting us all at risk for future pandemics. The current COVID-19 outbreak is a testament to this vulnerability. According to the Department of Health, as of May 1, 2020, of the total 8,772 COVID-19 infection cases, NCR registered a total of 5,968 cases, representing 68% of the country's total. Given the nature of the virus and the manner by which it is spread between individuals, highly dense communities in Metro Manila explain why nearly 7 out of 10 infected Filipinos are found in the nation's capital. This highlights our need to improve the quality of life in all regions of the country, improve access to social services, especially in rural areas, and decongest Metro Manila. It is for this reason I am supporting today a resolution urging the Executive Department to formulate and implement a Balik Provincia program. The proposed program is envisioned as a multi-sectoral comprehensive program to decongest Metro Manila by helping stranded workers and OFWs, assisting people who want to relocate to the provinces and encouraging people to settle down in the provinces for good. Under this program, people, particularly informal settlers and those living in danger areas, will also be encouraged to move out of Metro Manila and go back to their home provinces. As we continue to fight the war against COVID-19, we have also simultaneously craft plans and strategies to ensure that we are better prepared for pandemics that can occur in the future. The Balik Provincia Program is one of these measures that will allow us to respond more efficiently 
and effectively to those contagious diseases. While the entire country currently addresses the COVID-19 crisis, it is, more, it is important to give Filipinos hope for a better future and motivate all sectors to work together to learn from this experience, address perennial problems in the metro, and bring more opportunities in the countryside. Uh, alam niyo po, isa rin po sa mga dahilan kaya maraming hindi nakakatanggap ng mga social amelioration dahil yung iba po ay nandun sa probinsya, yung kanilang mga pamilya, ay nagtatrabaho sila rito. Ang dami po mga stranded na mga workers na napapabayaan lang po dyan sa construction site nila na gusto na rin pong umuwi. Kasi kami po, mga probinsyano, we are always fascinated na dito sa Maynila, maganda, kompleto rito, nandito po lahat ang... Uh, lahat! Makikita mo na lahat po. Pero ngayon, kaya na sinabi ni Senator Gordon, 8 out of uh, 10 uh, top po dun sa low graduate, uh, pumasa sa bar, ay uh, they came from the provinces. So panahon na po siguro, I'm urging the executive na planuhin yung uh, immediate at saka yung medium term at saka yung long term plan po para dito sa balik uh, probinsya. In, it, it is in the spirit that I ask this chamber to adopt this resolution. Thank you, Mr. President. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. With that, Mr. President, no other member wishes to sponsor or give individual amendments or interpolate. I move that we uh, adopt uh, proposed Senate Resolution Number 380 with the permission of our colleagues that uh, the members here present be made uh, co-authors. Including who those in the... And those in the gallery, in the uh, video conference. In the teleconferencing. Teleconference. All right. Any objection? Hearing none. <laughs> Hearing none, the uh, Senate Resolution 380 is approved, it's adopted. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I, I support as well this measure, and I thank the good uh, gentleman from Davao for uh, including us as, as, as uh, sponsors. As a matter of fact, once the ECQ has been lifted, Mr. President, I'm taking my whole family, with the permission of the DILG, I'm taking my whole family back to Cagayan de Oro and Bukidnon uh, for cleaner air and uh, more uh, space to walk around in. But, um, Mr. President, I believe uh, Senator Gordon has a request. Um, and he's also seeking clarification on what uh, Senator Frank Trillon wants done. Well, before, before because I have not divulged it to Senator... Right. Before I recognize that. Senator Gordon, that is uh, precisely what I wanted to ask you. You know, the, your presence here in the session hall and the minority leader in the virtual uh, presence, I thought, uh, you know, would give a, some kind of uh, the, <laughs> a leeway between the two of you, but apparently you're still talking. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, I think the real majority floor leader is in the TV, not in the, not in the hall. <laughs> All right, Senator Gordon, is recognized. Yes, Mr. President, again, uh, out of due, uh, utmost respect to my friend uh, Frank Trillon, who I understand has been maligning me. Uh, before the before, uh, before uh, that he will unmute me, Mr. President. Uh, uh, I'm glad that he is helpless out there. He cannot do any damage because he cannot have any any buttons to press. But anyway, Mr. President, I welcome a remark like this. But uh, levity aside, Mr. President, uh, Senator Alvarez is not only a good friend but a stalwart of the Senate, and. Uh, like I said in my uh, remarks in sponsoring the resolution, I have filed a resolution. I hope it's being numbered right now, Mr. President. And I've sent you a letter, Mr. President, uh, 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 addressing the concern, not the concern, but uh, a small request by, uh, by, uh, by uh, Silka, the daughter of uh, Cecil and uh, Sunny Alvarez. And uh, she was very touched that uh, uh, she was able to get blood when her father needed it, Mr. President. And uh, now, Mr. President, I would like to, uh, I filed the resolution number 390, and I'm sure the majority floor leader might read it later on, 
uh, essentially honoring the life of former Senator Harrison Sanity Alvarez by conducting a blood donation drive on the occasion of his birth date and on the occasion of his death anniversary of every year in partnership with the Philippine Red Cross, Mr. President. Uh, and that is why I feel that after having approved the resolution uh, uh, signed by all of us here, uh, we, will now, we should now uh, try to uh, uh, really acquit ourselves in honoring him uh, with the creating uh, two days uh, on his birth date and his death anniversary with the blood donations. Of course, it's voluntary, Mr. President, but that's the essence of uh, uh, true uh, you know, altruism. It is voluntarily done. Thank you very much, Mr. President. The minority leader has, uh, has recognized. <laughs> I see your microphone open. Uh, I'm glad to see Senator Gerard smiling, Mr. President. <laughs> he has his microphone open. I thought he was uh, seeking the floor. Right. Yes, uh, Mr. President. Uh, just uh, I would like to reiterate my request to the majority leader to <laughs> define some rules on the topic that I texted him on. All right. All right. Yes, uh, Mr. President. Although for the information of those who are virtual in their virtual session in the, at their homes, you can also mute the speaker so you don't have to necessarily listen, necessarily have to listen to all the speeches. No, I'm just, uh, just for the information. All right. Uh, Mr. President, although I'd like to take up the committee Resolution, you, but uh, you'd request that we take it up tomorrow? Yes, if, uh, if it's okay with Senator Gordon, we can, we can take it up tomorrow. Yeah. We can it's that. a very simple resolution, just uh, asking that the birth date and the death anniversary of Senator Harrison Alvarez would uh, be uh, uh, a chance to, for bloodletting uh, or right. blood, blood uh, drive, no, blood donation drive in the Senate. So with that, Mr. President, we have no other matters to discuss. We'd like to ask the Secretariat to come up with a clear-cut protocol on how will we, how will we uh, conduct our day-to-day um, -day sessions, especially virtually, when it comes to who will be handling the mute button, who will be, uh, well, uh, according to our rules, I will recognize those who would like to participate and, uh, and I'll ask the Senate President to recognize this yes. uh, particular uh, person. We're, we're, we're trying to practice it now already. Perhaps yes. uh, you can put up your computer tomorrow. Yes, sir. Um, with that, uh, Mr. President, Senator, uh, Senator, 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 the minority leader, sir. Yes. Uh, before we formally adjourn, let me just spread into the record my commendation to the Senate President and the majority leader for having conducted this first uh, session uh, through Historical. electronic media. Uh, it was, I would like to say, it was a success, and it gave everybody an opportunity like us who are who, who are not there to fully participate. I, I look forward to sessions like this in the future uh, where uh, well, uh, sessions through the electronic means can be held where necessary as in the cases of emergency. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. the Leader, thank you. for the effort that you have put into this activity which allowed us to continuously debate even during this difficult time. Thank you, sir. Thank you also, thank kind you. sir. Thank, thank you. Thank you uh, to our minority Senate floor leader. leader. And, uh, you know, this is truly historic, uh, Mr. President. This is the first time oh. in the history of Philippine Congress, Senate, uh, that we're having this virtual teleconferencing or uh, uh, video conferencing, which is becoming to be the new norm around the world. Many parliaments already in Europe are, are, are uh, pursuing this uh, mode of uh, um, uh, action and during the Senate plenary sessions. So with that, Mr. President, I move that we adjourn session. Adjourn or, or sorry, suspend. suspend rather. Yes. I move that we suspend session till 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Tuesday, May 5, 2020. So move. Any objection? Hearing none. The session is suspended until 3 o'clock in the afternoon of tomorrow, Tuesday, May 5, 2020. Thank you, thank you everyone, thank you. Okay.